Alaska are calling on the state of Alaska and the U.S. State Department to stop destructive mining operations, including mines in British Columbia, such as Red Chris, until further studies are conducted. The groups are calling for bans on water tailings dams in response to a recent engineering report on the causes of a recent spill. The report highlighted shortcomings in designs and maintenance. The Liberty Beat is made possible by CoinArch, offering innovative trading solutions for Bitcoin. Do more than just buy and sell Bitcoin. Use long and short positions to profit in rising and falling markets and to boost your returns through leverage. Visit CoinArch.com and sign up using coupon code MAX and get free brokerage for the first seven days. That's CoinArch.com. Support also comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, February 13th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A new trend in offices across the country, more and more people are switching to fetal position desks so that they can curl up in a ball on the floor while they work. Aaron Vaughn has a story. The human body isn't meant to sit at a desk for six or seven hours. The natural position, especially in the workplace, is to shut down completely, return to a womb-like state, and rock back and forth to soothe yourself. Fetal position desks, which are even popping up in offices like Google and Facebook, come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Some have adjustable height, so you can cower underneath them, while more expensive options include a warm, pulsating blanket for workers to wrap themselves in to feel calm. But many people are making their own. I rig this up so I can type comfortably and my arms won't get tired. Plus, it's got speakers so I can listen to a comforting voice saying shh over and over again. I've tried a fetal position desk myself, and I can say it's a great way to get through the f***ing day. Thanks, Aaron. I hate my job. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves, 855-450-FREE. That is the toll-free number, and you can join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. So feel free to reach out in the way that feels best to you. Actually, if you uh, if you have Skype, you should probably use that because you'll generally sound a lot better if you do. So give that a shot. Username LRN.FM. Just send a contact request there first, and it will be approved. And after that, it'll be easy for you to call us from that point forward. With you in studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And don't forget to join us online again at freetalklive.com. Daryl, you've got some not-so-surprising news, at least to longtime listeners of Free Talk Live. If you're new to the show, then this may be be a shocker. Uh, the story is about the Press Freedom Index, Press yes. Freedom Rankings. The World Press Freedom Index, which is a rating that Reporters Without Borders does annually. I'm not sure how long they've been doing this. I know it's been a but few it's years been at least. At least a decade. Yeah. So we've been talking the, about it for a while. The newest numbers came out. And not surprising to those of us who you know, know these things, but surprising to many, the U.S. is not at the top of the list. Not only that, it's almost out of the top 50. Yeah, number 49. It's less than a point from being in the noticeable problem category. <laughs> so there's free... Uh, mostly, I, I forget the word that they use, but it's like mostly free, noticeable problems, mm. really bad, and then yeah. like you know, you have no freedom of the press at all. I'd say category. even if it were called a noticeable problem or noticeable problems category, then that would still be an understatement because it's pretty clear how noticeable the problems are already with uh, stories like, was it Barrett uh, Brown? Barrett Brown. Who is now in prison because he posted a link to a chat room somewhere. Certainly. Uh, he's then a journalist. A couple of years ago, you had the Associated Press that got uh, all of their uh, phone records taken by the NSA because somebody was communicating with somebody that somebody in the government thought might have been a terrorist. 
So therefore, the Associated Press is terrorist. We have to get all of their phone records. Uh, A couple of years ago, it's actually been just over two years since Aaron Schwartz was... I, I... I will go out on a limb and say that the government caused him to kill himself. He was facing uh, life, actually much more than life in a prison Mm. for downloading documents that he was allowed to download. They just said, you downloaded too many of them, uh, even though they're free to download. So we're now charging you with all kinds of computer fraud. The attacks on WikiLeaks, uh, Edward Snowden, Glenn Greenwald. All Private Manning. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many stories. Of course, every single post over at photographyisnotacrime.com. I mean, there's a new story there every single day, at least one uh, news story about somebody who's a photographer or videographer who's being threatened and or arrested uh, by the police, there's a fresh headline there that was posted within the last 24 hours. Florida man arrested for video recording traffic stop. So it just goes on and on and on, and they don't care. It seems like it seems like the government guys care even less now if if they're attacking mainstream media. There were, of course, uh, mainstream media people that were attacked during the Ferguson situation. They were tear gassed. They were, you know, arrested, threatened. I mean, just all kinds of nonsense. And that's just you know within the last couple of years that we're talking about. And we're only highlighting things off the top of our head. Right. So take a wild guess. Which country comes in number one on the World Press Freedom Index? It, it wouldn't be wild if I took it because I mean I've been I've been paying attention to this index over the years. But Danica, do you want to take a crack? I really have. I, I couldn't even venture a guess. I think what? it was the Netherlands or something like that. <laughs> oh. Finland is Finland. Okay. Oh, right. uh, for the fifth consecutive year, and I think about the eighth in the last thirteen years, Finland is at the top of the list. Followed by Norway and Denmark. Okay. At the bottom of the scale, Turkmenistan, North Korea, and Eritrea. So North Korea, not the actual bottom. Second to last? Second to last. Okay. Wow. Followed by Eritrea, which is another tyrannical regime, but you don't really hear a lot about it because- Is it Africa? It is. Okay. Uh, it's right near Ethiopia. Okay. Like there are so many other problems going on in Africa that, you know, Eritrea having no press freedom is not the worst thing that's going on in Africa. Well, right. And considering there's no press freedom there, it would be very hard to learn what's going on there. Wouldn't Certainly. It? So the presentation, as it's called, from Reporters Without Borders says. France is ranked 38th, up one place. The United States, down three to 49. Mm -hmm. Japan, uh, and these are just some of the highlights of noticeable countries. Japan, down two places to 61. Brazil, up 12 spots to 99. Russia, at 152, is down four spots. Iran is unchanged at 173. And how many China, are there on there? 176. How many on the list? Uh, 180. 180 countries in the world. The U.S. There are 193 members of the United Nations. Uh, several of these are joined together as East Caribbean uh, because they've got some sort of East Caribbean Federation like sort of All thing. The right. Okay. So a bunch of island nations are all lumped together okay. as East Caribbean. Because of this trade pact that they have that's a little more tight bound than the EU. So the United States being at number 49 on this chart means they are not even in the top 25 percent of most free countries in the world for press freedom at this point. They would have have had to have been within the top 45 to have made the top 25 percent. Right. And so that means that they've not been in the top uh, quadrant for two years for two consecutive years because they continue to drop it seems like year yes. after year the press freedom uh, rankings by reporters without borders for the united states continues to get worse and I, I don't know who it was but somebody observed recently that you just don't hear people saying well it's a free country anymore about the united states i've not heard that in i would say about eight nine years yeah it's been a while since i heard it too I think that that's a real admission uh, from people, whether they realize it or not, uh, sort of a silent admission 
that people do understand that something's wrong in the U.S. Yep. So uh, before I continue with the presentation from Reporters Without Borders, I did pull up the actual listings of what they call these various categories. So if a country scores from 0 to 15 points, that's the best you can do. A 0 would be the best then you are considered to have a good situation. From 15.01 to 25 points, it is satisfactory. So these points are almost like demerits. They're they're actually, you don't want the points. Right. Okay. You do not want points. Uh, 25.01 to 35 is noticeable problems. Mm-hmm. 35.01 to 55 is a difficult situation. And from 55.01 to 100, 100 being the worst possible score, then you have a very a very serious situation. And they show each government with a, a score by yes. It. Is that right? uh, so I, I can actually pull that up in another screen, uh, and I'll do that between segments. But let me continue from the presentation. It says the 2015 World Press Freedom Index highlights the worldwide deterioration in Mm. freedom of information in 2014. That's not good. Beset by wars, the growing threat from non-state operatives, violence during demonstrations, and the economic crisis, media freedom is in retreat on all five continents. I was going to say, if if you've got a country that drops, if a bunch of countries drop in their press freedom and one country stays relatively steady, like they mentioned Brazil was up 12. Right. But that could just mean that a bunch of other countries went down. Yeah, that is true. And so as a result, Brazil was just sort of status quo, but it made it look like they went up the rankings. So I guess it would depend on what their total score was. Right, and I'm going to pull up the scores now so that we can compare some of that. Toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. Are you shocked by this? Do you still believe that the press is free in the United States? You can chime in here. It's Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So take it up to you. I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. 
FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. Dial on in toll-free here to bring up what you like. 855-450. Freeze the toll-free number. Freedom of the Press. It is dropping year after year. According to Reporters Without Borders, it's an organization that, among other things, they do a yearly ranking of the various different countries of the world, in this case 180 worldwide nations on this list. The very bottom of the pack, you've got uh, North Korea and Eritrea, and then at the top of the list, uh, was it Finland? I think it was Finland, Norway, Norway, Denmark. One, two, three. Not quite to the middle yet, but getting down there, the United States at number 49, dropping from 46. We'll continue with some interesting, more, uh, more interesting details. Why do you think Finland and Norway are among the highest? Well, there are um, specific things that they are ranking these statistics. Uh, they've got information that uh, different categories. Yeah, I'll, averaging I'll, I'll give the categories here in just a second. We'll get into that. But first, I want you to know about Vegas.com. Of course, you may be already planning your vacations for uh, this year, and uh, Vegas should be at the top of the list. There's so much to do there. But there are a lot of people who are going to try to sell you packages uh, and things to do in Vegas. But at Vegas.com, they serve up Vegas from the inside. Because unlike those other travel sites, at Vegas.com, everyone who works on the website lives in Vegas. They work in Vegas, and they party in Vegas. So they know the people that set the deals there. And the moment the prices drop, Vegas.com drops them on their site in real time. Plus, they actually have the Drop Watch tool that promises the lowest rates on hotels. Dropwatch continues to monitor the price even after you book and will notify you of changes to ensure that you get the best deal. So you book at the lower rate and they'll refund you the difference. Vegas.com does the work for you and they've got your back. In fact, you can get a t- an extra 10% off of everything except the air hotel packages over at Vegas.com. So you can get 10% off hotel, 10% off shows, just not the airline stuff. So use code FTL to get that 10% bonus savings. That's code FTL, like Free Talk Live, over at Vegas.com. They get the best rates on not just hotels, but also headliner shows, tours, attractions, and even VIP bottle service at top clubs. It's Vegas.com with code FTL. As we continue here, Daryl, you're kind of running down a summary of some of the information that you might want to know about the world press freedom situation. And according to Reporters Without uh, Borders, it is not a rosy situation. Things are not getting better around the world. Despite the fact that a handful of countries have climbed on the charts, uh, overall, things are worse. Yes. Uh, So before I get into the rest of the presentation, as it's called, it's basically... You know, their summary, but they call it a presentation. I just want to go over the uh, criteria that's used since Danica had asked about that. 
So they have seven criteria that they've used since 2013. The first is titled Pluralism, and it measures the degree in which opinions are represented in the media. Different opinions. Yes. Yeah. So, in so, so variety like, of opinion. So like in North Korea, where the only media of which to speak is coming from the state, that would score very poorly in yes. that category. Media independence measures the degree to which the media are able to function independently of sources of political, governmental, business, and religious power and influence. So that measures you know, not only just independence from government, but independence also from non-state entities mm-hmm. that would have tremendous influence in some places. Now, of course, here in the United States, you could argue that the, the press is independent here. But on the other hand, when you start to dig beneath the surface, you discover that many of the mainstream media in the U.S. are very dependent on the government. They look to the government for press releases. They take those press releases and they parrot them, in some cases, word for word. Oh, absolutely. And they represent that as news. Well, you uh, also have a lot of media consolidation mm, yeah. to where a lot of the outlets— while they you know, come on different channels or different websites, they're owned by the same entity. So sure. you, you have Warner. Yeah. So you, you have you know a lack of independence in some ways there. Uh, next is environment and self censorship. This analysis of the environment in which journalists and other news and information providers operate. The legislative framework analysis, the impact of the legislative framework governing news and information activities. Uh, Then you have transparency, which measures the transparency of the institutions and procedures that affect the production of news and information. Infrastructure measures the quality of the infrastructure that supports the production of news and information. And finally, on the list, you have abuses which measures the level of violence and harassment during the period assessed. There's plenty of that in the United yes. States. And oh, yeah. they actually have a questionnaire that anybody can fill out. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I'm guessing that these are calculated in some kind of way to where all of the questionnaires from different countries are then compiled. And they have a formula, and they actually show the formula but it would make absolutely no sense if I've read this Obviously. formula on yep. the air. But they they show exactly how they calculate this with the different variables. This is a respected uh, calculation. This is a respected report that comes yes. out on a yearly basis. And I think it's fascinating stuff. And I think it can be a real shocker to people who, uh, to some extent, still believe, well, it's a, at least you can say what you want in the United States. Can and, you? Yeah, really? No, it, it really doesn't seem to be that way anymore. So, so is there more that you thought was worthy of sharing from this story? Yeah. Uh, they write, the indicators compiled by Reporters Without Borders are incontestable. There was a drastic decline in freedom of information in 2014. Two-thirds of the 180 countries surveyed for the 2015 World Press Freedom Index performed less well than in the previous year. Mm-mm. The annual global indicator, which measures the overall level of violations of freedom of information in 180 countries year by year, has risen to 3,719, an 8% increase over 2014, and almost 10% compared with 2013. The decline affected all continents. The Balkans region of the EU was by far the... Uh, Biggest hit area. They had the biggest fall between 2014 and 2015. They write, this disturbing trend reflects a twofold phenomenon. The excesses of some member countries on the one hand and the inability of EU mechanisms to contain them on the other. The region that is at the bottom of the freedom of information list, North Africa and the Middle East, This year, once again, contained information black holes comprising entire regions. These are controlled by non-state groups in which independent information simply does not exist. So when they say uh, controlled by a non-state group, I mean, are they referring to ISIS? ISIS? They call themselves uh, a state, Al-Qaeda. Right. 
uh, ISIS technically stands for the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, and mm-hmm. they call themselves a state, but they are not internationally recognized, not recognized. as such. I see. Right. So technically, they are a non-state entity. Uh, Boko Haram is another one. What uh, can be done about this? I mean, the it's the numbers are interesting, but. I mean, is it just going to keep getting worse, or is there a way to actually turn this around? That's what I'd like to focus on here. 855-450-FREE. Share with us your ideas and thoughts. 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. More coming up. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Are you hungry for delicious, nutritious, rich, and satisfying home-cooked meals? Discover the Vita Clay 4-in-1 Smart Organic Cooker. Unglazed Zisha Clay, an ancient secret that makes this fast multi-cooker so special. Infusing your food with incredible flavors, perfect texture, vitamins, and minerals for your good help. It's a slow cooker, rice cooker, a steamer, plus a yogurt maker. Go to VitaClayChef.com and enter promo code RADIO20 for 20% off at checkout. That's VitaClayChef.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special super early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through early March, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm.
It's Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free to bring up what you want here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. ExpressCoin is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrencies and getting them at a very affordable rate, by the way. The uh, ExpressCoin uh, transfer fee was uh, the best I'd ever seen. Um, so you can go and get Bitcoins, Litecoin, or Dogecoin from them. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. You can use... Money order, check, or wire transfer. They are a licensed money services business, and you can get started over at ExpressCoin.com. Whether you're in the United States or Canada, that's ExpressCoin.com. Uh, you can even do it from your smartphone. They've got an app there, so go grab that at your leisure. ExpressCoin.com. Don't forget to use coupon code FTL, and then you'll get up to $40 worth of your cryptocurrency with no fee at all. ExpressCoin.com. Coupon code is FTL. As we continue here, uh, Daryl, you're sharing with us some um, uh, details from the Reporters Without Borders 2014 study uh, regarding press freedom around the world, the United States down again, year after year, down, 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 this time to number 49 on the list of 180 countries. I mean, that's more than 25% of the way down the list at this point. And where will it be in 2015? Probably not going to be better if things continue in this direction. Now, there was uh, some other information that you wanted to share with us from that article, but the question I asked, and, I, and we can get into that, but the question I asked was, you know, what can be done about this? The the outlook, if you will, of Reporters Without Borders across the whole of the world is not very good. Right. So uh, Finland, which remains number one for the fifth consecutive year, mm -hmm. their score dropped by 1.12. Mm, not good. So it dropped from 6.4 to 7.52. Norway dropped. Denmark dropped. The Netherlands dropped. Canada saw no change in their score and moved up the rankings 10 spots. So, so Canada is now number eight on press freedom. So even the top-ranked countries have dropped in their totals. Yes. So being ranked number one means you're the best of all of the worst, right? Like you yes. Know, it's not even really much of a compliment. But yeah, you're the least shielding of everything that's going on. You're <laughs> the least bad. It's like being the best politician. You're just the least bad. It doesn't mean you're good. But what can be done about this? I mean, it, the United States just keeps getting worse. Obviously, we would like to see more press freedom being in the media. Um, I don't like the idea that people are going to prison for protecting their sources. That's happened here within just the last couple of years. I don't like the idea that people are going to prison for posting information that the government doesn't like, uh, like Barrett Brown. And, uh, you know, I certainly don't like the fact that photographers and videographers are being threatened on a regular basis by the police. So what can actually be done? That's a very good question, and I don't know that I have the answer, but... Uh, I've got an answer. My okay. answer to that question is... I, that I, I, I just want to pause real quick and yeah. say that I love when you do this. Okay. You ask somebody <laughs> else a question so that you then get to give the answer. Oh, I'm like, well, hold on, let me give you my answer. <laughs> you could have given an answer, but you didn't have one, so I'm going to give you my answer now. I mean, I gave you the opportunity. Danica, did you have an answer? No, Feel free. not at all. <laughs> so my answer is that people in the United States who care about press freedom need to put their freedom on the line, and they need to not back down when the police are telling them to turn the cameras off. They need to, you know, not back down when they're being threatened by the various different government agencies with some sort of penalty or uh, some sort of sanction for exercising their freedoms. Now, that obviously will result in some people having their cameras broken and having their, you know, face pushed into the pavement by the police. I mean, it's not going to be a pretty process to, to make things better, but kowtowing and you know, cowering in front of the police and in front of these government agents uh, is not going to help the situation. So the only way to protect your rights is to stand up for them, which means to put your freedom on the line. And of course, that's a fairly, fairly risky thing to do. And when one person in the media, say Barrett Brown, goes to prison, that sends a message uh, to the rest of the media that, hey, you better look out. You could be next. And that's a real chilling effect on the freedom of, of the press. And so the more people get in trouble for this, the worse uh, or the, the less courageous, I suspect, many in the media will become. And it will right, be a problem that builds on not, itself. This is not the 
press courageous index. This is the press freedom index that measures the effects and impacts of government laws and yeah. non-government intervention in the media. So standing up for your right is not going to move the U.S. press freedom index. It will move the courage index that currently doesn't exist. Well, there's some courageous people in in the United States. But I, I didn't say there wasn't. What you mean I'm is saying there's, no there's one studying that. There's not a study that yeah. ranks the press courage index. Well, what do you think would be if there was such a thing? Who do you think would be on the top? Um, I have no idea. Or close to the top, I should say. Couldn't tell you. I don't know who all the people in the press are, so it would be a well, if, not even, not if even I just people it. in the press, but just you know people that you're aware of that have put their freedom on the line, such as you know Private Manning, Snowden. All of them have put that on the line to get us the information. Well, Snowden and Manning aren't technically the media. Well, I no. mean, they just released information to the media that were mostly outside of the United Glenn States. Glenn Greenwald has... Who doesn't live here. Right. But I don't think she was saying only people in the U.S. Oh, that I'm have sorry. ever been courageous. I thought you were talking about the U.S. Not necessarily the U.S., just people that not, aren't necessarily the media well, then, but if we're not talking about just the U.S., then I would say Greenwald is probably the most noteworthy. Mm-hmm. Greenwald, Assange. Yeah, Assange. He's been in that Ecuadorian embassy for how many years now? Oh, yeah. And A few. Snowden and Two Russia. or three. So what I was trying to say, though, is that uh, if people stand up for their rights, then maybe they won't get challenged on them as often. I mean, we've seen that happen to some extent here in Keene, where... Uh, the cop block folks have more of an ability to record the police here than the average person does in, in you know, the average place in the United States. Right, so and we've also to seen to, to where both me and you have gotten the court's media registration form, mm-hmm. and we've repeatedly been told by bailiffs that we can't film in court unless we go fill out a form that the media registration form it's says we don't to. have to fill out. Right. Yeah, so they didn't even follow their own rules. They ignore their own rules, and it's, it's and frustrating. And that is why the press freedom number keeps going down, mm-hmm. is because you know they make a rule, and then they don't follow it, and they try to stifle the press anyway. You know, I would like to see a breakdown. I know they don't do this at Reporters Without Borders, but it would be interesting to see a 50-state breakdown to see which states in the United States are the worst, because some places are certainly worse than others right. uh, within the U.S., and uh, I, I just wonder where New Hampshire would end up on that list. Very interesting question, and I don't know the answer, but New Hampshire does have some of the worst laws for investigative journalists. Like wire, the wiretapping laws. Uh, the yeah. wiretapping law. The way it is written, it prevents investigative journalists from doing hidden camera stings on businesses. It's terrible. I mean, they're just absolutely horrible. In fact, there was news recently over at Freekeen.com. Uh, there, there was some footage recorded by students in uh, the Guilford School District that revealed that the school buses have these cameras on them that have apparently not just been recording video, but have also been recording audio with a with a microphone. I heard about that. And they got the bus drivers to admit this on video. So it's that's an open and shut case of wiretapping, wiretapping by the New Hampshire statutes. Yep, and the students are probably going to be convicted because I don't know if they told the bus driver, hey, I'm recording this they conversation. Did. Actually, they did. It was the first thing they did when they stepped on the bus was okay. let them know that. But then again, Daryl, you've argued that the way the, the New Hampshire wiretapping statute is written is so vague that even if you did inform someone. It technically says someone, consent. Right, that even if you do inform someone of your recording, that doesn't necessarily mean consent. So maybe they will charge these kids with wiretapping. But the point being that the government's breaking their own rules here uh, in these government school buses. And they're just getting a free pass which because are, it's them. Well, so far they're getting a free pass. I mean, I wouldn't expect them to all of a sudden charge their buddies with this particular crime. They like to reserve wiretapping for activists and for anybody else that you know actually catches the government doing something naughty. And that's it's a terrible law. You're right. That needs to be repealed. But on the other hand, we can actually get video cameras in the court system here relatively easily. So in many places, that's near impossible uh, to accomplish. So, you know, we got some good things, some bad things. Hopefully that'll start to change as more liberty lovers move in. Reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go Go up. up. A barter barter currency. 
You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturing. If you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Well, today was an historic occasion in Pennington. That's right, Diane. The entire town turned out to honor Paul Webster, the area's one gay man with Pennington's first-ever gay pride parade. Paul, a 33-year-old hardware store owner, was too shy to ask for a parade, but that didn't stop almost 2,000 residents from showing their support for his homosexuality. Mayor Sue Hallinan organized the parade and even chipped in some of her own money to pay for decorations. Well, I was channel surfing one day, and I came across a program about the gay pride. Next time I went to the hardware store, I said, Paul, we're going to throw you a parade. And he just said, oh, please don't do that. I don't want that. I beg you. He just didn't want us to go to the trouble. Uh, he doesn't want to ride on the penis float. Uh, he gets motion sickness, so uh, we're going to have him hold the reins instead. And Penningtonians have already decided on a fairy tale theme for next year's parade. Oh, that'll be great. And if Paul has a boyfriend, they can both be dressed up as kings. Terrific idea. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Dial in toll-free to bring up anything you want, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Uh, still to come here tonight, snow snitching is going on in Boston as neighbor turn against neighbor as the snow continues to, uh, it will be continuing to fall here in uh, yet another 24 hours or so. In... Because Boston says, we have too much snow. Well, apparently they've got quite a bit of it and they've been running out of places to put it, according to some of the media that I've seen, but uh, also now. Hold on, Boston's right next to an ocean. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thunk? <laughs> There's plenty of room this is government daryl they're doing it, their it doesn't best. make sense 
So we've been talking about the Reporters Without Borders report that uh, has been issued going over the 180 countries in the world and where they rank on uh, press freedom. United States at number 49. You probably thought it would have been in the top 10 if you'd never heard of this report before. The entire time we've been following it, the U.S. has been in the 30s and then dropped into the 40s and is now about to drop out of the 40s and drop into the 50s, likely here in 2015. This is the 2014 edition of the report, which was just released. Technically, it's the 2015 Oh, really? But edition, it's looking at 2014. But it's based on numbers from 2014. Okay, I apologize about that. So, Daryl, you've been uh, summarizing from Reporters Without Borders, and there's more to share, yes? Yes, there is. So, the, they actually have some surprising correlations here between press freedom and other things, such as per capita GDP, economic stability, oil exports, and weapons purchases. Now, of course, correlation is not causation, so this is just True. interesting. Uh, and I'm not going to cover all of these, but Ian, I've given you the link that you can put on the Facebook and the Twitter. Okay. Uh, they begin by saying per capita GDP correlates positively with media freedom, a correlation coefficient of 0.41. Norway and Denmark are good examples. They are among the 20 countries with the highest per capita GDP in the world and are ranked 2 and 3, respectively, in the 2015 Press Freedom Index. At the other end of the scale, the world's poorest countries, Ethiopia, Gambia, and Eritrea, rank 142, 151, and 180. In these countries, poverty and authoritarianism go hand in hand. That makes sense. And information is suppressed in favor of state propaganda. But there are contrasting examples that show that media freedom is not a prerogative of the rich. Niger, the world's least developed country, according to the United Nations Development Program, is ranked 47th out of the 180 <laughs> countries in the Press Freedom Index. Despite a challenging economic environment, Niger's media has been diverse and outspoken since President Mamadou Tanja's departure in 2010. But while the creation of democratic space has been positive, Niger's poverty continues to be a structural handicap, limiting media development and the introduction of better educational educational standards in journalism. Hmm. So, yes, uh, correlation is not causation, but it is interesting to look at these and see how they correlate, especially when you look at the economic stability and oil exporting countries. And at the bottom here... Let's point out also that Niger ranked higher in press freedom than the United States. Yes. Yeah, one of the, the poorest countries in the world ranked higher on this ranking than one of the most wealthy countries in the world. Yes. Wow. Arms and media independence do not go together. The countries that spend the most on weapons in relation to GDP have the least free press a hmm. correlation coefficient of 0.29. The best example is North Korea, which invests an inordinate amount on its military and tolerates absolutely no media independence. But it's not alone. In Zimbabwe, which ranks 131, the eternal dictator and predator of media freedom, Robert Mugabe, pumped an insane 11% of the country's GDP into arms purchases in 2013. This is a world record for a country not involved in any conflict, one that still awaits criminal code reforms that would protect freedom of information. So I, I realize that, you know, again, correlation does not equal causation, but when you look at all of these, it does seem as though there's some, there, there has to be something there behind all of these numbers to show that the more authoritarian a country, mm -hmm. the poorer the people are going to be, the less the press less freedom informed. you're going to have. Sure. I think that you can draw that. I think that's a, generally a safe conclusion to yeah, draw. Yeah, I mean, look at Korea, for example. Well, North Korea, anyway. Our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. I'd love to look at North Korea, but you really can't because the place is like a black have you box. Ever, yeah, have you seen it from a satellite? It's, it's very dark yeah, it's at very nighttime. Dark. 
Uh, you really can't learn much about North Korea unless you know you happen to manage to get the permission slip to go there. And then even if you do, you're on a state-sanctioned tour the entire time, and they you're only show you— take, You're only allowed to take certain pictures. Right. They only show you what they want to show you and what you're authorized to see. And it's very unlikely that you'll be able to go off the beaten path, so to speak. Glenn's in Philadelphia. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Glenn. Glenn in Philly, going once. Glenn in Philly, going twice. Tell you what, we'll put Glenn on hold. Maybe there's some technical I'm here, difficulty. I'm here. I'm oh, here. Glenn's I'm there. Here. All right, great news. Oh, wow, what a delay. They, yeah, on they, the air. They have, they have to push the button. They have to push the button. Uh, um, yeah, I was called to talk about the press freedom thing. But first, uh, here in Philadelphia, when we get humongous snows, the city loads up dump trucks, and they dump them in this body of water called the Delaware River, and it seems to work very well. Uh, however, in Boston, the, the liberals can't do that because they, they don't want to uh, the freshwater snow to affect the salinity of the ocean and possibly uh, global warming, see, so they might aggravate anthropogenic global warming by putting their snow in the ocean. Um, anyway, um, about the press freedom and the courage thing? Yes, sir. And uh, yeah, um, actually, that I was kidding about the snow thing. <laughs> um, but the um, the press freedom thing about the courage uh, uh, thing. I, I think it's uh, quite reasonable to talk about the courage of the press um, because if they can, uh, you know, stand up. Yes, certain people. You know, it's by exuding courage and taking a stand that quite possibly they might be able to back down a tyrannical government and and thus achieve more freedom for the press. Because sometimes, you know, when you turn the light on and the roaches scatter, you know, uh, the things get better. So, yeah, um, I think that's true. That was kind of what yeah. I was getting at earlier um, I, as yeah, well. I but I, your, I understand your, where Daryl was coming was from in that by <laughs> Yeah, I, what I was going to say is I understand where Daryl's coming from, that by somebody just standing up for themselves, while that may mean the cops might leave them alone, it won't necessarily change policy, which may not be reflected by the no. rankings. Right, and when you look at uh, the Ferguson situation, you had media that was standing up for their rights. They were still right. getting arrested, and that's part of why the U.S. fell in the right. press freedom ranking is because right, right. of the dozens of journalists that get arrested all the time. Right. Well, the war isn't won with the first battle. It might take a number of, number of incidents before it reaches critical mass and you know and gets enough attention. Um, yeah, that's true. The, um, one thing I was going to say also about the press as the fourth estate, let's not forget they've been, you know, infiltrated and bought up by humongous, you know, look at the, you know, the, meta, the you know, metastatic disease known as Clear Channel. <laughs> I mean, you know, all these, all these uh, corporations came in, they bought everything up, they hand everybody talking points, they've surrendered quite a bit, you know, and now t today if, you know, Woodward and Bernstein tried to, to – you know, leak Watergate today, they'd probably be stomped on by a producer who says, no, 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 that's not in your talking point. So, the, you know, the press is sort of, um, you know, by being bought up in in this fascist manner, you know, they can't, they, now it's like, oh, no, what have we done? We've, um, you know, these corporations have uh, colluded with the government, and now when they want, they find it when they might want to speak more freely. Uh oh, they relinquish it's too it late. by selling out. Yep, that's yep. true. Glenn, thanks for the call and the thoughts. I appreciate it. Toll free number is 855 450 free. And I, I'm glad he mentioned the Watergate thing uh, because when Private Manning was trying to leak the documents, mm -hmm. I, I say leak because that's the term that's used. Basically, you know, Private Manning was trying to blow the whistle on war crimes. Private Manning went to the Washington Post and a couple of other, you know, mainstream media outlets and they said they turned him down. Get out of here, kid. Yeah. And so then Private Manning went to WikiLeaks. That's true. The toll free number is 855 450 free, 855 450 3733. You can take control of the airwaves here. Bring up whatever's on your mind. Coming up, Danica is going to tell us about a, a young, uh, I guess, a lady who's been braiding hair for a long time. Mm -hmm. And now the state is coming down on her. Is that right? That is right. There's more coming up. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. 
Get to Lumber Liquidator's spring flooring kickoff sale and save on all the latest hardwood flooring trends. Get the hot new look of gray flooring plus 80 more styles of laminate from 49 cents. Check out gorgeous matte finished hardwood from Bellawood or choose from more than 200 styles of pre-finished hardwood from 169 plus deals on distressed floors and over 70 styles of bamboo from 179 and get 18 months special financing for deals on over 400 floors. Get to the spring flooring kickoff sale. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. Cabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel anytime. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Majid lives in Nordavin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, February 13th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.02 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,228 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $235. Antiwar.com reports, after another 17 hours of marathon talks in Minsk, Belarus, the Ukrainian civil war is once again heading for a ceasefire, with officials on both sides announcing the deal and the fighting scheduled to formally end on Sunday. Both sides are getting significant concessions, including the long-sought withdrawal of heavy weaponry and artillery from the front lines between Ukrainian government territory and rebel-held Donbass. Ukraine is also to get back a pilot who is being held by the Russian government on charges of killing a pair of Russian journalists during the Civil War. The Eastern rebels are being assured of future constitutional reforms, as well as economic and humanitarian consideration for civilians trapped in the frontline combat areas. The reform promises appear similar to the ones from the September 2014 ceasefire, which held for months but began to fray when the reforms did not happen. That ceasefire finally collapsed last month with skirmishes around the Donetsk airport giving way to a full military affair offensive on rebel territory. The rebels turned the table pretty quickly and regained some territory lost before September, meaning Donbass now includes some territory not held since last summer. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a federal judge ordered a Mobile County, Alabama judge to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples on Thursday. U.S. District Court Judge Callie Grenade said Mobile County Probate Judge Don Davis must issue the licenses after he shuttered the county's marriage license office earlier this week. On Monday, the state started handing out marriage licenses to same-sex couples for the first time after Grenade struck down Alabama's ban as unconstitutional. She said the Alabama Marriage Protection Act was unconstitutional 
unconstitutional because it violated the Equal Protection and Due Process Clauses of the 14th Amendment. Roy Moore, the Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, told probate judges not to issue the licenses, and some, like Davis, followed his order. Grenad ruled Tuesday, if plaintiffs take all steps that are required in the normal course of business as a prerequisite to issuing a marriage license to opposite-sex couples, Judge Davis may not deny them a license on the grounds that plaintiffs constitute same-sex couples or because it is prohibited by the Sanctity of Marriage Amendment and the Alabama Marriage Protection Act or by any other Alabama law or order pertaining to same-sex marriage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports two remaining Al Jazeera journalists jailed in Egypt on charges of aiding a terrorist organization were freed on bail Thursday after more than 400 days, but the court said the case against them was still pending. The case triggered an international outcry and has been cited by government critics as evidence that Cairo is rescinding freedoms that were gained after a 2011 uprising that toppled autocrat Hosni Mubarak, allegations that the government denies. Mohamed Fahmi, a naturalized Canadian who gave up his Egyptian citizenship, was released on bail of 250,000 Egyptian pounds. Beher Mohamed, who only has Egyptian citizenship, was released without bail. Judge Hassan Farid said the next hearing in their case will be February 23rd. A third Al Jazeera reporter sentenced with them, Australian Peter Gresty, was freed on February 1st and deported. The three were sentenced to between 7 and 10 years on charges including spreading lies to help a terrorist organization, a reference to the Muslim Brotherhood. President Abdel Fattah LCC has said he wished the journalist had been deported and not put on trial. The courtroom erupted in applause after the judge read his decision. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A majority of Americans are pointing to Friday's tragedy as a clear call for major reforms in everything, or literally anything at all that might prevent acts of horrifying senseless violence. According to a recent ONN poll, the nation is united in saying that the key to preventing future tragedies is a drastic change in gun control, mental health care, school security, media coverage, violent entertainment, the fragility of the human condition, and really so many other things we probably haven't even thought of. Yeah, Jesus. The Randolph Center for Public Health and Safety also released a statement saying, quote, if you look at statistics regarding gun violence in the United States, you'll see the recent shooting is a clear cry for any thing at all to please, please be different. In Washington, lawmakers have reached a bipartisan agreement that the U.S. desperately needs tighter firearm restrictions or looser firearm restrictions or, honestly, whatever option just makes these things stop, do that one. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You may dial in toll-free and bring up whatever you'd like at 855-450-FREE. Join us via Skype at username lrn.fm. Just send a contact request to that username. It will be approved. And then after that, you can easily call us via Skype. With you tonight in the studio, you've got me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. Danica is going to tell us in a little bit about a lady who is in trouble now for braiding hair without a license. Or something to that effect. Yes, without a license, effectively. So we'll tell you more about that here in a moment. Also, in the first hour of the program, in case you're just tuning in, we talked about the uh, not unexpected news from Reporters Without Borders that the United States has yet again slipped down the list of the um, press freedom rankings that the Reporters Without Borders releases yearly. Now at number 49 out of 180, down from number 46. Although across the board, apparently, most countries have dropped in their freedom rankings. Two-thirds of the countries dropped. Yes. Yeah, that so- doesn't mean that the other one-third rose. Some of them stayed exactly where they were. Right. 
but wound up moving up the rankings because their rating did not change. Because others dropped. So we got into a lot of detail about that in the last hour. The link to the study is available on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can access those over at news.freetalklive.com. Be sure to follow us on whatever method of uh, social networking is your preference. Now, Daryl, in related news, you've got a story about investigative journalists who are saying they're being watched here in the United States. Yes, uh, the story comes from the Washington Post, and it's about a Pew Research Center study that was done uh, about a week ago. Investigative journalists often play a dangerous game, they write, working to publish things others would rather be kept in the shadows. And new research suggests most fear the U.S. government is keeping an uncomfortably close eye on them. Nearly two-thirds of investigative journalists who were surveyed by Pew Research Center and Columbia's Tau Center for Digital Journalism believe the U.S. government has probably collected data on their communications. The numbers rise to 71% when they asked investigative reporters who cover national security, foreign affairs, or the federal government in general. Now, is this just speculation on their part, or you know, have they actually seen some evidence that some kind of government spook was in a car watching them with binoculars or something? I wonder what leads them to believe they are being watched. Uh, for the most part, it's speculation. Mm -hmm. But the author says, are these journalists paranoid? Yeah, that was what I was wondering. Probably not. Thanks to revelations by former NSA contractor Edward Snowden, members of the public and journalists now know a lot more about the way the U.S. government tracks digital footprints, including those of its own citizens. That's very true. And the Obama administration has overseen one of the harshest crackdowns on leakers in U.S. history. Hmm. Yeah, those they were supposed people, to be for transparency, weren't they? Oh, all about transparency. How'd that work out? Yeah. Uh, sent... More whistleblowers to prison than all other U.S. presidents combined. Is that right? Yes. Wow. Uh, charged three times as many whistleblowers with espionage than all other U.S. presidents combined. Wow. He's got a whole two years now, to go. Now, to be fair, the espionage crime under federal statute is only about 100 years old. Okay. Uh, and only three people before President Obama was inaugurated had ever been charged with espionage for being a whistleblower. Mm. And Obama has now charged either eight or nine people with espionage wow. for whistleblowing. So, you know, the numbers are fairly small, but at the same time, you know, that's still three times more than all presidents combined before he came into office. The article here continues it says those people are the sources those being investigative journalists are the sources of wait hold on um leakers rather are the sources of investigative journalists and journalists have gotten caught up in the fray just ask james risen or the associated press luckily for you dear reader reporters aren't ready to give up quite yet just 14% of members of the Investigative Reporters and Editors, which is a journalism nonprofit, have said that fears of digital surveillance or hacking have stopped them from pursuing a story, contacting a source, or leaking, or rather leaving journalism altogether within the last 12 months. So 14%, uh, that's, you know, almost two out of 10 of them who have said they've, there have been chilling effects. Yes. That's not good. That's no. so sad that you were just, you're scared to do your own job, that you had some sort of, you know, willingness to do training mayhaps that you just, you know, you're scared to do your job now. It's just so sad. Right. Uh, that's like one in seven and a half journalists who in the last 12 months have said, I'm not going to pursue this story. I'm not going to contact this source or you know what, I'm done being a journalist mm -hmm. and just left all together. And how many journalists have had their jobs held at stake? If you don't find, you know, this good story or lead this story, you're out. You know, con you know both conflicting sides. Uh, the article continues. It says, but nearly half did say that such concerns led them to change how they store and share sensitive documents. And nearly a third said it has affected how they communicate with other reporters, editors, 
and producers. However, hackers and electronic surveillance weren't the biggest barriers to investigative reporters being able to do their jobs. A huge majority, nearly 90%, cited decreasing resources in the newsroom as their top concern. Well, budgets are being cut uh, in old media. Newspapers, for instance, are oh, yeah. having a very difficult time. And uh, staff is, is you know, there's an axe being taken to the personnel budgets in a lot of these places. And I'm sure that's not the only thing that they're cutting out. Right. So one thing that I covered when I was talking about this on my podcast, Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, this afternoon. There you can are, download at fppradio.com. There are things that governments do that indirectly cause the newsroom budget to wind up being cut. Okay. So taxes go up. Uh, in a lot of states, the minimum wage went up earlier this year. So when you're having to pay the paper boy more money. That's true. Well, all right. You know what? We don't need this part-time sports reporter. Uh, Danica, I know you normally cover the courts, but there's no court on Friday at 7 o'clock, so you need to go cover boys' basketball, <laughs> which means that Danica now has less time to accurately – uh, investigate court things right because she's covering boys basketball and you have other things of the sort that wind up spreading the staff thin to where they can't do a good job well i think that that's generally true i don't think minimum wage affects paper delivery boys well it does when they, they can't they can't pay them the minimum wage anymore no i think that they don't get paid minimum wage i think they get paid based per newspaper that they hand out there or there's per even, route yeah it or, depends on it depends on the uh the newspaper i used to deliver papers okay. when i was a teenager uh, so so did you get like a flat fee for the route there or? were a couple of routes that were a flat fee and then we would get extra so wasn't hourly is what you're saying though, um right? d- yeah so on certain days there were there was out hour, hour, that i can't talk because you wouldn't hourly. want hourly you wouldn't want hourly because then the paper person's just going to dick around and not you know, deliver things quickly. Right, right. but, but you know, if, if I'm getting a hundred dollars for delivering to you know a hundred houses, I mean, you know, to money to a teenager, that's a nice little extra set of money. And then if you sell subscriptions or if you sell subscriptions for Saturdays and Sundays, there's an extra bonus in there for you too. Sure, so you get commission. So, uh, yeah, okay. a lot of times what they'll do, and I've applied for like a newspaper sales job that I was told was a job, and then wind up finding out that it's a commission thing that you sell, but We guarantee that we pay you minimum, but if you don't meet commission, then that's what you get. But we want you to make commission, so you have to sell above. And if Mm -hmm. you don't sell for, you know, X number of days, then we're cutting you. Same thing with paper delivery. It's like, all right, so, you know, here's what you would make if you deliver all of these in one hour. But if it takes you, you know, less time, then we still have to pay you for the one hour. So that there's all sorts of weird calculations mm-hmm. to where it's a mandatory minimum, but we would prefer to pay you the commission to where you make more and it saves us paperwork oh, somehow. My favorite was when the customers would complain and say, my newspaper was found in the bushes and I specifically said to put it on the porch. What, were they telling the truth? Um, who knows if they were or not. Well, you're the one who delivered it, right? But yeah, but they can say whatever they want, and then I don't get credit for that paper. Well, so, I mean, you didn't put it in the bushes, so right. they're making that up. 855-450 free is the toll-free number. You can share your thoughts. Maybe you are in the newspaper delivery business. It's Free Talk Live. Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800-691-6129. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, 
How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road underground market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm Free Talk Live, you can dial toll-free to join us here. The number is 855-450-FREE. Your comments on press freedom and how, over time, it seems to be lessening. That has kind of been the theme of the show thus far. But coming up, we'll talk about hair braiding, illegal hair braiding. That's what Danica has on the table here for tonight. And snow snitching is happening in Boston. Our toll-free number again, 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype. Skype username's lrn.fm. And you've heard about Bitcoin. Maybe you've heard about blockchains as well. What's it all mean to you? Well, you can head down to the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference happening at the Moody Theater in downtown Austin, March 28th and 29th, and you'll find out. Keynote speakers will include world-famous investor, economist, and author George Gilder, plus IBM's architect of their blockchain technology. Sambala Nair will be flying in from India. David Johnston, Jason King, Robert Murphy, Vitalik Buterin, and Charlie Shrem are many of the distinguished speakers that are still being lined up for the biggest Bitcoin event going. And it's especially so since the second annual Texas Bitcoin Conference will also be hosting the second million dollar Bitcoin 2.0 hackathon. If you want a glimpse into the future going even beyond Bitcoin, you'll want to be in Austin, Texas, March 28th and 29th. Mark your calendars now, start making plans, and go get your tickets over at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Use code FTL when you purchase, and you'll get a $25 discount off of the already affordable $150 admission price. Plus, when you Use code FTL. Another $25 of your admission will go to Sean's Outpost uh, with your ticket purchase. 
And that means that the folks over at Sean's Outpost, which is a great Bitcoin-based charity, will be able to help even more people as they assist the homeless in North Florida. TexasBitcoinConference.com. Go there, get registered. Look forward to seeing you there because Free Talk Live will be broadcasting live again this year. We were there last year, and I was uh, it was fun to be a part of. I think this year is going to be even better because, you know, second year you learn from your mistakes the first year. And I think one of the things that they are doing right uh, big time this year is they're holding it in downtown Austin. Last year it was kind of on the outskirts of Austin. This year, downtown at the Moody Theater, March 28th and 29th. Go to TexasBitcoinConference.com. Don't forget to use code FTL as we continue here. Ian, Danica, and Daryl in the studio. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We've been talking about press freedom, and uh, Daryl, you've been telling us about journalists who are feeling like they are being watched, that uh, the government is keeping an eye on them, and they're feeling intimidated. They're feeling like they, uh, you know, they can't even get their jobs done because of the cuts that have been going on in the newsroom. And I think, did we kind of get through most of that, that uh, piece? We got through this entire article. That's what I thought. So we were talking about some of the difficulties of being a journalist today in an environment where the future is uncertain, especially of the mainstream media. Uh, we're seeing, of course, folks like Glenn Greenwald. He's jumped around. What was he with Slate first, then with The Guardian after that, and now has launched his own website called The Intercept and is still making headlines, making international news uh, from his blog. And that seems to be you know, the direction some people are going. So let, let me ask this question. What distinguishes a blog from an online news source or an online news magazine or online newspaper that's a that's a very interesting question a blog is you know usually an individual's or an individual companies or whoever decides to use the blog readings of news or events going on and i and i suppose that news would be something from an actual like large broadcast systems such as ABC or NBC. Is that what you is that how Kinda, you see like, it or are you interpreting well, how other people would, see it? If someone would say, "Oh, I got this from I got this news from a blog versus I got this news from NBC." That's how I would interpret it. I would look at a blog and be like, "Okay, that's is an individuals or a couple of people's opinions about something versus an entire news station's opinion about it." So, but th- so that's your viewpoint. You're not saying that's what the average person thinks. You're saying you feel like blogs aren't news. I wouldn't. No, oh, no, definitely not. I'd say that they are certainly news, but blogs tend to be just on a much smaller scale, whereas you know news stations just tend to be a little bit larger. That that's just when it. you say this. When you say scale, do you mean the number of people visiting the website or right? It depends on the blog because a blog can be you know a tiny baby blog and only reach a certain amount of people, or it may reach. Thousands of people, depending on how long the blog's been going, depending on what they talk about. Right, Whereas, but th- then you have websites like Free Keen that gets uh, more fans on Facebook, and I would dare say probably more internet traffic than the website of the local newspaper in Keene, New Hampshire. Oh, sure, they defin- have more fa- uh, fans on Facebook. Oh, sure, definitely. But you know, how long did it take Free Keen to get up there? Not very long. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the the local newspaper's been around for what a uh, two hundred and something years, something like that. Yeah. But Ian's also using more modern day effective techniques to promote free key and get out there, whereas the newspaper probably isn't doing so much. Well, again, Daryl's incorrect in what he said. The newspaper does have more likes on Facebook. So oh, I, I thought I had heard that Freaking had more likes no, or was approaching uh, their number of likes. There was a time where we were within a few hundred, but they've uh, widened the gap a little ah, bit since okay. then. Mm. Okay. So, no, that's not the case. And the, uh, you know, they get shared online too. Sure. So I don't think that, I don't really much uh, think that your definition is real you know, you can't really put your finger on it, I guess, in that you're saying that you think there's a difference between blogs and mainstream media, and the difference is the number of views that they get. But or there it, are some blogs that have more views than mainstream media. Let's take LouRockwell.com, for example. Certainly. Uh, that's one of the most popular libertarian websites sure. out there. It ranks, I mean, if I, could, if I were to pull up their Alexa ranking, uh, it's certainly more likely that LouRockwell.com has a higher ranking than the Keen Sentinel does. Uh, on Alexa.com. Would that mean that Lou Rockwell is not a blog and it is now mainstream no, media? Not necessarily, because- but if I'm going to ask a random person in, let's you know, say 
a small neighborhood in, in say, New York, and I say, oh, hey, have you heard about the news um, on Free Keen? They'd be like, free what? And if I say, oh, have you heard the news on ABC? They're more likely to under- to know what went on ABC News than they would be with Free Keen. I, I, I'm not trying to say that blogs are mainstream media. I'm asking the question of what differentiates a blog from an independent media's website and... You know, is everything that independent media? What differentiates a blog from indie media? Is that what you're asking? I'm, or did you right. state? No, I, I I never tried to say that a blog should be considered mainstream media. Mainstream media is that that you know goes right down the thing, and you know, like they're towing the government line. That's okay. what mainstream media does. Independent Are you media. Asking what's the difference between a blog re- and Huffington Post? Like, is that what you... Give me an example of independent media. Okay, so uh, the Ridley Report is independent media. Huffington Post, uh, to some respects, is independent media. Okay. The Intercept is independent media. Correct. But you called The Intercept Glenn Greenwald's blog, and I dare say that it's not just his blog. It's an independent media website. True. He does have other bloggers there, uh, or reporters, if you want to call them that, at uh, at the Intercept. Right. So where do you draw the line between something that is a blog and something that is an independent media I consider website? blogs to be independent media. I don't draw a line. Uh, yeah, I would. Con- I mean, I consider it media. I guess it just depends on how many people are going to be working it versus just one blog versus like three people on a website. So the, I, I'll, I'll explain why I take exception to the use of the term blog. Okay, 855 free is the toll-free number here. 855-450-3733. You can share your thoughts on what is media. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, There's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists, get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow, a new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. 
please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. Fair, and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. You Come see, to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you dial toll-free to bring up anything you'd like. We're talking about media and what defines a blog versus uh, independent media versus mainstream media. Uh, you can share your thoughts. You're certainly welcome to join us here at 855-450-FREE. The us includes me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. Daryl is joining us courtesy of his website, fpp.cc. That's where you can go to get more of Daryl in written form. Also, order books with Bitcoin. Over at fpp.cc, you're a publisher, Daryl, and an yes. editor. You, uh, what's one of the recent, more recent books that you've published? Uh, the most recent book is titled "How to Be a Hobo." It really? was written by Brooke Willette, who a lot of people in the Liberty circles would know as the Truth Fairy. Oh, uh, she spent that about last name doesn't sound familiar to me. Uh, that's her real last name. She went by Brooke Kelly uh, oh, okay. for a while. Okay. Uh, she spent four years living as a hobo, two of those completely off the grid, no cell phone, no identification, no documents at all. And she has, you know, just a overcome. pair of fairy wings. What's that? Just a pair of fairy wings. Uh, actually, for most of that time, she did not she have the them. fairy wings. Oh, okay. Uh, was just her and the dog and a pair of overalls and socks. Huh. Uh, wow. But she recently, you know, got off the streets and wrote essentially her memoirs about life on the road hmm. and how to get off the streets. And, uh, you know, she put a lot of her heart and soul in this book. And I wanted to help her get that out to a wider audience instead of just being an ebook. And it was published a little over a week ago. Cool, and you That's can go grab a copy at fpp.cc and listen to Daryl over on his other website, fppradio.com. So uh, we are talking about press freedom, and Daryl, you'd ask the question. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Can you re-ask the question? Yeah, so you said that The Intercept is Glenn Greenwald's blog. Yeah. And I take exception to that term. Okay. And I asked, what differentiates in your mind a blog from a media site. Nothing. And Danica thought that I was asking what differentiated between a blog and mainstream media. Uh, That's what I thought when you first asked the question. No, so, you know, media could be independent media, uh, you know, mainstream media, alternative media. And the reason I take exception to the word blog is because the federal government has recently been trying to define journalist for a journalism shield law. And Diane Feinstein, who's one of the senators from California, said, quote, I can't support it if everyone who has a blog has special privilege, or if Edward Snowden were to sit down and write stuff, he would have privilege. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> so she only wants covered journalists, and they're trying to define a journalist as someone who, you know, it's they're living, they're paid by someone else. So it would take freelancers That's completely terrible. out of the equation. So only if you're actually getting paid for, would you be considered a respected? No, not just getting paid, by but if you some have company? an employer that is media. I see. 
so which are if easier you to own control. a media company, you're not media. If you're an independent journalist, you're not media. If you're a freelancer and you get paid by 10 different companies, yeah. you're not media. So if that's the case, then so let's say I have a blog and let's just say my blog is popular enough. I get millions of hits per month. I get lots of revenue from people clicking on them. I get money from advertisers and that's how I make my living. I'm not considered a true journalist. By their de- uh, by definition. By the definition that they are trying to push through federal legislation right now, no, you're not. Oh, that is so fantastic. That's why I take offense to the word blog. I think that the only thing that is a blog is what the creator or the owner of the website considers a blog. Mm-hmm. So there are websites that I go to that they use, you know, quote unquote blog software. They're, they're yeah. using WordPress. WordPress. But they are not blogs, in my opinion, because the owners of the site don't consider them blogs. The reporters of the site don't consider them blogs. And the readers of the site don't consider them blogs. Yeah, I guess, you know, I never really thought too hard on it. Uh, blog was just uh, like Free Keen is a blog. It's mm-hmm. it, it's blog style in that everything that's new comes to the top of the page and then gets pushed down. But it's also considered a news source by Google News, and we do break news on the Free Keen blog. I mean, I've never really thought, oh, I shouldn't use the term blog because that doesn't that somehow disqualifies us from being a news blog. I I don't I guess I don't have the same negative uh, right. associations with the term blog. To me it's all media, but what you're saying is they're trying to differentiate this. Right. But that won't just affect bloggers, it'll affect anybody who's an independent media Certainly. person. So right. So consider this, Daryl. So um, the chat room spoke up and has a couple of ideas. One of them is that with uh, with crowdsourcing and the rise of the pro amateur class, what it really boils down to is, is it your job and are you being respected for it when it comes to having some sort of blogger or, me- or news? What do you think about Be- that? Being respected by whom is my first question, because there's a lot of people that respect Glenn Greenwald. But there's a lot of people that despise the man oh, sure, because he's going against the grain. So, you know, being respected, I, I don't really think weighs into whether or not someyone's a journalist. So would you say that it just really depends? It would it be a matter of who respects him versus how many people disrespect him. Let's say he has two million, you know, lovers and one million haters. He obviously has twice the amount of haters, but is he still considered respected? I don't know. Who decides? I, I, I mean, would say yeah. what makes someone a journalist is if they, one, call themselves a journalist, and two, do journalist-type things. And journalist-type things I would define as reporting on what is happening. And Can you be a journalist and be biased? Certainly. Okay, well, what about, I mean, this is a terrible example, but what about... You know, our very own James Cleveland that, you know, he was saying, hey, I'm I'm exercising my freedom of the press and got promptly shut down for it because they didn't uh, a lot of people considered him not a journalist for what right. he was doing. The, the cops didn't recognize him as media. And I dare say that the uh, jury that he's going to be going to at some point in the future, they are probably not going to recognize him as media. Mm-hmm. That doesn't make James Cleveland not, not media. media. Right. So just because you know people don't recognize you as something doesn't mean that you're not it. Well, and also, right, just because James didn't have an ABC News ball cap on when he was back there and a press badge hanging around his neck doesn't mean that, like, even if he had those things, the police may still very well have done the same thing. Right, and Dave Ridley, who is, what, the number two uh, news source as far as YouTube likes or subscribers in New Hampshire... In yeah. New Hampshire you know, he's gotten in trouble for filming at events where they're like, you know, you can't be here, media only. And he's like, I'm the number two, you know, video news source in New Hampshire. And they're like, well, you're not MUR, so get out of here. Let's go to Liberty Phoenix. He's in Illinois via Skype. Hello, Liberty Phoenix. Hey, guys, I'd first like to address uh, Emperor Feinstein Patine. It sounds like she only wants individuals of the media to be they, them, those who are endorsed by government and have their nice little government permission slip, which yes. um, she's lost her damn mind. Um, but the original reason that I called is you had asked earlier, how, what are some type of steps that people can do to create more press freedom? And it really only boils down to something that I 
I believe it was about a year ago that I called in and mentioned it. Individuals have to put their bodies against the wheels, against the gears, against the machine. And, you know, just like uh, Savario had said in his speech, what, 40, 50 years ago, when the, when the operation of the machine becomes so odious and makes you so sick at heart that you can't take part, you, you can't even passively take part, you have to throw your body against the machine. There has to be martyrs in order for it. People have to go to jail. People have to be beaten. They have to be tortured in order to re-secure these liberties that we have no ability to defend because the, the media is not allowed to go out there with guns and protect themselves. It's just not happening. And the only way that we will gain free, press freedom again is if people get it's a sad state of affairs. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Liberty Phoenix. I, I tend to agree with that. Unfortunately, the path to freedom can lead through a cage. 855-450-FREE. You can take control of the airwaves. 855-450-3733. Or call in like Phoenix did there at username lrn.fm on Skype. When we ran out, we stopped using it. Why would you stop? Why undo all the good that's been accomplished? We thought everything was fine, and that was not a good thing. No, 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 no. He started stinking. It was awful. Shedding comes back. Loss of hair. Lots of dandruff. Scratching will return. His shedding will increase. If I ever took Roy off of Dynavite, he would go back to his hair loss. <gasps> D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. When I get down to the bottom of my box of Dynavite, when I get to about three quarters. Oh, no. I've got a couple more scoops. It's time to place my order. Dynavite.com. Each and every day she is getting that Dynavite. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. If it's working, don't quit. Don't do what I did and run out. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or... 
go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free to bring up whatever you'd like or comment on the topic at hand, which is the media and definitions therein. What is the media? How does a blogger differ from a journalist? And should a blogger differ from a journalist? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I say there shouldn't be any difference. It shouldn't matter how small the person's audience is. It shouldn't matter their level of influence, how long they've been doing it. None of these things should matter as to whether or not they're considered a journalist, at the very least by the government. You as an individual can consider somebody whatever you want, and that doesn't matter. You can have whatever opinion of the host of Free Talk Live that you want, uh, but we should have the same right as anyone from MSNBC or Fox News to access governmental records, to access governmental court procedure, uh, procedures, and you know have the ability to record them just like anywhere else. And I'm disturbed, Daryl, about this story that you're sharing uh, from the uh, Washington, D.C., that there's some kind of a hearing going on trying to determine what the definition of a journalist is. I'd like to actually like to know more about well, that. Well, that. that hearing was actually in 2013. But uh, they they've had these hearings off and on every you know year or so when somebody has put forth a media shield law to try to define exactly what protections journalists have, who is a journalist, who is not a journalist. If let's just say Ian somebody approaches you and says, "Hey, I know you uh, right over there at freekeen dot com." Mm-hmm. And I've got some documents, and I'll talk to you as long as you keep my identity concealed. And you know, James Risen, who is a reporter for the New York Times, he was in jail over keeping secret one of his sources. And they, they were trying to force him to testify in court, and he was adamant that he would not. And That's after heroic. several years... The courts decided, you know what, he's not going to talk to us anyway, strike him from the witness list. Hmm. So, so he's know, out of jail finally? Uh, he finally is out of jail. Wow. And he's not going to have to give up his sources. So, you know, but he, he paid is the price. clearly he is clearly pressed. You know, New York Times reporter, clearly pressed. Nobody's going to deny that. Yep. But then it comes, oh, Ian Freeman has a secret source. Uh, we're going to say Free Keen's not press, so therefore you can't claim uh, you know, journalistic privilege, and we're going to make you talk. So they're, they're trying to distinguish you know, who is, who isn't, what protections, etc. And then you've got Diane Feinstein saying, you know, like, this shouldn't cover some kid with a blog. Uh, it shouldn't cover Edward Snowden. So did a decision, uh, was a final decision made on defining journalists, or was this just some sort of a hearing that never uh, led to anything? It's hearings on legislation, and none of the legislation has gone through. Okay, so but that's good. But they keep having hearings, and they keep introducing bills, and you know, sooner or later, something is going to wind up going through as legislation. Well, I suspect the ACLU will jump on that uh, oh, you know, certainly. Once, once that happens, um, and hopefully they'll get it overturned. Now, at least here in New Hampshire, we've actually had fairly good, uh, I guess, we've had good encounters to some extent as far as getting the uh, the alternative media here recognized as media uh daryl you and i are both officially recognized by the uh the uh, new hampshire justice system or if you want to call it that the supreme court and the subsequent courts uh as being news media you individually and me using the name free keen uh, which Actually, me through Free Press Publications. Oh, you did use FPP for that? Yes. Okay. I uh, in that New Hampshire thing. and Massachusetts, both. Oh, right. good for you. That's awesome. So, And it wasn't hard to do either. I mean, it was just a matter of sending in a very easy form with the state, and then we renew it once a year. And, yeah. And that's it. So it wasn't a problem. They didn't bulk. They didn't ask us for any kind of statistics or anything like that. It was just, we're the media because we say we're the media. And that's it. And and the form actually says that, you know, this grants you privileges and 
uh, it eliminates the requirement to have to file the notice of recording. That's right. But there's still a lot of bailiffs in most of the courts sure, that we yeah. go to that say, oh, no, you still have to go file this. And even here in Keene at the Cheshire Superior Court during Rich Paul's hearings, the judge actually said, Ian Freeman's the only person that can use any electronic <laughs> That's device. That's right. I remember that. Even <laughs> though I have media right. registration, I was not allowed to take my cell phone wow. in. Uh, the Keen Sentinel reporter actually had to keep his stuff turned off. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow, I didn't even realize that. Maybe yes. I'm just misremembering, but yeah, I didn't realize that. Because normally in that court... He had paper and a notebook and then when he walked outside huh. he was able to open up the laptop wow. and start writing it's ridiculous now and in, in normally in the courtrooms here in Keene, or at least in the district court you're talking about superior court right this was superior court and it was in the old courthouse yeah. as well in district court uh you'll regularly see multiple activists just holding up a video camera in multiple parts of the room so it's that's like a demili- demilitarized zone almost at this point for, right and media. even during the uh, Robin Hood trial in Superior Court, you had set up the camera. Mm-hmm. I then stood behind the camera because you were one of the defendants in the case. Right. And grumpy old bailiff Tebow came over and started yelling at me, you can't operate the camera. And I'm showing him my media <laughs> registration form. And he said, I don't want to see that. Sit down. Yeah. You can't operate the camera. Wow. So, so even your permission slip didn't work. There. What did you do then? I stood there and you know turned the camera on to him Good. yelling at me. See, that's <laughs> that's exactly what I was talking about before and what Liberty Phoenix was pointing out that when your freedom of the press is being oppressed by these government goons, the best thing you can do to preserve that freedom is to continue recording and call their bluff or force them to, you know, into a position where they'll go ahead and use force on you. Um, so then they'll look bad. Then they look like absolute thugs in that case. And you called their bluff. He didn't do anything about it. Uh, you continued to record right. and everything and, was fine. Well, what baffled me the most was that he did not want to look at my media registration right. form. He was like, I don't care what you have. Get your you paperwork out of here. He just didn't like you for just whatever reason. Well, he hates everybody. I mean, <sighs> he's just an angry old grump. Grumpy old man. <laughs> Love it. So there you go. Uh, Toll free number is 855 450 free. So, yeah, I think media is just media. I don't think there should be any dividing lines anywhere. You can make your own mind up as to whether or not you respect a given media source. There's plenty of media out there that's not worthy of respect, but they're still media. Right. You know, they still should have the same protections, they still should have the same rights uh, as anybody calling themselves a journalist or a reporter or a blogger or whatever term. So there you go. I think that's all that I've got to say about that. Did we cover the issue to your satisfaction? We, we did. I I still I look at the term blog when used by politicians and it's pejorative people almost. in the mainstream media. Yeah, it's definitely you know derogatory. Hmm. What about vlog? Do you find that derogatory? That means video log, uh, right? <laughs> I want to like jab my ears with pins Why? when I hear that. Why? Because it's an annoying term. Vlog. It's a video blog. What's your problem? <laughs> it's almost as annoying as the term vodcast. You can't just throw a That's V a in one. front of yeah. something and say, oh, well, it's a video. I don't have a vooze paper. Then it, then it's-, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a magazine. You can't magazine. just put a V. I've seen those before. Video. What, is it a live stream then or is it a vodcast? Yeah, podcast. That's that's kind of a pet peeve. A little, no, not not a real pet peeve, but it's more of an annoyance for me. A podcast. People will use that term incorrectly, very commonly. That uh, they'll call uh, they'll call the media itself a podcast when in fact the podcast is the actual method of distribution for the media. Uh, but you know, if people call something wrong, if people call something incorrect, wrong and or long enough, it becomes that new term. Right, like. How many times have people written articles about you or cited you in an article and put Ian Freeman, who hosts a nationally syndicated podcast? Yeah. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty annoying. As well. Or satellite. It's think- a radio show that also has a podcast. I think the local newspaper referred to me as a satellite radio host recently as yeah. well. Yeah. Which... 
technically is not inaccurate, but it's also not the most honest description. So we can't right. start calling you Howard Stern then? <laughs> well, right. I'm not on Sirius XM, but Free Talk Live is available on satellite via Free to Air Satellite, which is available across the globe in a lot of different places. Uh, in Africa, Central East, West Central Africa, as well as across North America and Central America. But the average American certainly does not have any method of receiving those signals. Right. They're like, what's a KU band? Yeah. All right. So there's more coming up here. And uh, Danica will be telling us about a lady who for a long time has been braiding hair. This has been her method of making money for herself and providing yep. a living. It's her way of her living, way of healing, a way of teaching and... They are coming down on her for yeah. it. Tell us more about it here in a little bit. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. More coming up. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the Fully Informed Jury Association at FIJA.org. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, February 13th, 2015. Gold opened today at $1,230, up $6. Silver opened at $17.32, up $0.41. Cents, and Bitcoin is trading around $236. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest, most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. Extreme weather from droughts lasting for weeks and torrential rainstorms robbing the country of vital crops for food to snowstorms of 70 inches plus stopping cities in their tracks. Supporting your family through these difficult times is what eFoods Direct does. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, on Thursday, doctors and health professionals representing seven countries released a letter warning that the controversial Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement will lead to higher medical costs for all nations. The letter, published in the Lancet Medical Journal, states that rising medicine costs would disproportionately affect already vulnerable populations. The doctors called on the governments involved in the trade deal to publicly release the full text of the agreement. An international committee of scientists have released a report stating that geoengineering techniques are not a viable alternative to reducing greenhouse gas emissions to combat the effects of climate change. The committee report called for more research and the understanding of various geoengineering techniques before implementation. 
The scientists found that certain techniques are likely to present serious known and possible unknown environmental, social, and political risks, including the possibility of being deployed unilaterally. The report was sponsored by the National Academy of Sciences, the U.S. Intelligence Community, NASA, NOAA, and the U.S. Department of Energy. The Sacramento County Sheriff's Department is seeking to upgrade its cell phone surveillance tools. That's according to recently revealed documents. News 10 Sacramento reports the department filed an application for a new $300,000 Stingray cell site simulator in August of 2013. Stingrays work by tricking cell phones into sending data to the devices as if it were a cell tower. Despite evidence that the department is using the tools, no requests for search warrants have been made. The Liberty Beat is sponsored by the Texas Bitcoin Conference. Hear from speakers like Charlie Schramm, Dr. Robert Murphy, Vitalik Futurin, and Catherine Bleich. March 28th and 29th at ACL Live at the Moody Theater. Tickets on sale now, texasbitcoinconference.com. Support also comes from Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online, shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, February 13th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Former intelligence analyst and whistleblower Chelsea Manning has been granted approval for hormone treatment for a gender transition. Officials with the Department of Defense stated the therapy was approved on February 5th. The announcement follows a lawsuit filed in D.C. last September where Manning stated she was at risk for suicide if not given treatment for gender dysphoria. Manning is currently serving a 35-year prison sentence for leaking classified documents to WikiLeaks. First Nations people of Southeast Alaska are facing threats to their traditions and way of life from large mining operations. The United Tribal Transboundary Mining Work Group and Haida Indian Tribes of Alaska are calling on the state of Alaska and the U.S. State Department to stop destructive mining operations, including mines in British Columbia, such as Red Crest, until further studies are conducted. The groups are calling for bans on watered tailings dams in response to a recent engineering report on the causes of a recent spill. The report highlighted shortcomings in designs and maintenance. The Liberty Beat is made possible by CoinArch, offering innovative trading solutions for Bitcoin. Do more than just buy and sell Bitcoin. Use long and short positions to profit in rising and falling markets and to boost your returns through leverage. Visit CoinArch.com and sign up using coupon code MAX and get free brokerage for the first seven days. That's CoinArch.com. Support also comes from Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, February 13th, 2015. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Here is the Onion Week in Review Transportation Edition. In Albany, a Greyhound bus crash claimed 30 miserable lives Tuesday, finally putting over two dozen deadbeat fathers, penniless drug addicts, and hapless bastards out of their misery. Emergency crews at the scene of the merciful accident described the sea of fast food bags, candy bar wrappers, and losing lottery tickets surrounding the crash site as utterly tragic, adding that the scorched corpses inside the bus were, quote, only slightly more lifeless than before the deadly accident. Evidence suggests that most of the victims suffered during the crash and for many years before they even boarded the bus. All I can say is, thank God no one made it. Al-Qaeda is refusing to carry out any further terrorist attacks until the U.S. mass transportation infrastructure is drastically improved, calling the country's roads and bridges a, quote, travesty, unbecoming of a developed first world nation. We want to turn your bridges into rubble. But if we took credit for making them collapse, no one would ever believe us. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free to bring up anything you want. That's the idea behind the program. Or sit back and listen as we yammer on about various different things. Uh, we've talked a lot about press freedom here tonight, and that's pretty important to us. But hopefully it's important to you as well. 
Uh, although I feel like we've exhausted it, maybe you've got something to add into that discussion. You're certainly welcome to do so. No topic is off the table here at Free Talk Live just because we move on to other things. You can always call in at 855-450-FREE as we launch here into the third hour of the program. With you tonight, it's me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. Don't forget, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. We've got Skype, by the way. You can Skype in to the show at username lrn.fm. Danica, tell me about illegal hair braiding. Where is it happening? What's going on? All right. So this comes from Forbes, and the title of the article is How Braiding Explains What Has Gone Wrong with America's Economy. Okay. Do tell. So Isis Brantley has been arrested, jailed, and a plaintiff in a federal civil rights case. Her name's Isis? I know. Okay. Just Just checking to make sure I heard that right. Oh, yes. it, it, It is Isis. She is not a whistleblower or a political dissident. She teaches how to braid hair. For almost 20 years, Isis has fought Texas over her right to braid hair and to pass her knowledge on to others. Her struggle recently accumulated in a, a shedding a spotlight in occupational licensing. Today, millions of Americans, like Isis, have to seek permission from the government or fight back before they can do their jobs. Isis has been braiding hair since 1979 and has taught others in the art of natural hair care since 1984. Like many African braiders, Isis doesn't use chemicals, dyes, or coloring agents when she braids, twists, or weaves hair. As she puts it, her personal philosophy is healing through hair. But in 1977, seven uniformed and undercover officers handcuffed Isis in front of her customers and dragged her out of her salon in Dallas. She had previously been found guilty and convicted for her surreal offense of braiding hair without a cosmetology license. So after a decade of fighting for reform in 2007, Texas finally, uh, what's this word, uh, acquiesced uh, and created acquiesced. a- Acquiesced. thank you. Uh, and it created a separate 35-hour hair braiding certificate. The state, quote unquote- So wait, she was arrested in the 70s? No, she was arrested in 19, 1997. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said 77. She, oh, she did say 77. No, I said 97. She has been. She's okay, well, been we both heard hair. you say 77. Oh, I apologize if I did. Okay. But she's been she's been working with hair since the 70s. Okay. So arrested in 97. Arrested in 97. A decade later. A decade later in 2007. They then came out with some sort of 35 hour license certificate. Yes. Okay. Uh, So since the state grandfathered her in, they honored her as the first natural hair care expert in the state. Finally, she could braid hair for a living. Legally. Legally. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that reform didn't apply to teaching hair braiding. This This is where it gets interesting. In Texas, braiding schools were regulated as barber colleges. So despite her decades of experience... Isis would have had to spend about $25,000 to comply and transform her natural hair salon into a barber college. And the changes were needed so that her teaching would satisfy the 35 hours of training students needed to attain a license in braiding. I mean, we're, I mean, we're talking about just taking, you know, strands of hair and twisting them around so they form a braid. It's, you, you know, it does. Well, you know, if you take, don't have a license, you could hurt somebody, Danica. We I mean, need you could the totally government. pull somebody's hair out, or you know, get caught on a beat or something. And I, I've read stories. I've read the story about this down in Texas. I've read other stories to where you know governments in various municipalities have told people, "Oh, you need a cosmetology license to be able to braid hair. Mm-hmm. It's only going to cost you seven thousand dollars, and it's a thousand hours of uh, teaching." And then during the cosmetology stuff, they don't teach you anything about how to braid hair or that kind of hair braiding. They uh, they don't cover African hair braiding, for instance, or whatever. I remember reading about something very similar in Dr. Mary Ruart's book, Healing Yeah, the Our girl World. in Chicago. Right. We can come back to this here in a moment. I know there's more to say, Danica. Mm-hmm. Adam's on the line listening in Bridge, uh, Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Adam, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, I wanted to talk about the uh, press freedom in the courtrooms. Yeah, sure. Uh, with a recent event that happened to me, I recently had to appear in court for a, uh, a minor matter for a dispute with one of my old landlords. And um, I was surprised when I first got to the court and there were the signs plastered on the windows saying uh, cell phones were banned from the court. Mm. And um, you, Had you never been cons- to court before? Uh, well, I had actually been there a few months ago and I was allowed to take my cell phone in. Wow. In Massachusetts? So did- yes. 
Interesting. So All I right. did some research, and I guess this uh, change was recently put into effect on December 1st. Hmm. Um, and they said about 30 different courts had uh, implemented the ban. Because they've and been, just concerned. a point of information here, uh, Daryl, you and I have been to court in Massachusetts last year in and the Palmer, year before that. Uh, 2013, yeah, 2013 and 2014. Um, wherein we were not allowed to have cell phones in that building. So, I mean, this didn't... This seems like it's old news to me and and Daryl. Maybe it wasn't a rule that applied across the entire. It might of the not court have system. been statewide. Yeah. Yeah, they said it was only about thirty separate courts um, spread out between Boston and Southern Massachusetts. Okay. But um, I was I was like wondering about it, like what their justification for that was. So I did a little research and I found an article in the Enterprise, which is the local newspaper here, and they said that they were considering cell phones weapons because they were suspecting. <laughs> uh, of course, they gang were. members gang members and career criminals from posting pictures of witnesses for the purpose of witness intimidation. Well, yeah, that's ridiculous. That's absolutely and, uh, ludicrous. You can still get a camera into the courts in Massachusetts, as Daryl was pointing out before. We've jumped through those hoops. Uh, Daryl, you specifically in Massachusetts. I don't think I bothered in, in Mass. You did not. Yeah. Um, so I went through the process of filing with the SJC, which is the State Judicial Commission or something. Mm -hmm. And not only do you have to have that form— but you then have to tell the bailiffs that you need the request to film that the judge then either approve. approves or denies. And don't forget to stay and don't forget to arrive an hour early so you can jump through all of those hoops in time for the actual hearing. That was the first time we went. Yeah. And then yeah. I sent an email to the head of the SJC asking if that was standard procedure. The next time we went, a couple of months later, they basically rolled out the red carpet. <laughs> Mr. Perry, come on in. Here's the form. Uh, uh -huh. And, you know, it was, you know, royal treatment, right. basically. <laughs> but I think at first it was, let's see if we can intimidate this guy into not trying to film this case. Yeah. So, I mean, you, it, there are some cases where they will try to restrict the witness from being uh, filmed, but the times I've ever only seen that have been when they're cops on the stand. I've never seen them say, point the camera away uh, to a camera person when it's just an average person who's up as a witness. I suppose they would do it if it were a minor, perhaps, but uh, otherwise it's just the police, the undercover cops are trying to protect, not the gang members. Well, I mean, I, I was only there for a small claims court, yeah. but the, it was like a blanket ban. And I was kind of wondering, I was like, what about the people taking uh, public transportation and they're there and they don't really have anywhere to store? Luckily, I drove and I was in the parking right. garage across the street and I could put it in there. And uh, in the article, it was saying that people were actually hiding their cell phones outside. And mm -hmm. when they would get out, they would come and find that someone had taken it. Taken it, sure. And, um, and it's not the court's but, fault, uh, right? They, the court yeah, can't exactly. be held responsible for that. But uh, one of the silver linings they, they put in the article here was that there's a barbershop across the street that charges uh, $1 for secure uh, cell phone storage. That's so cute. That kind of helps. That kind of helps people out. But I just, oh, just wait ridiculous. until the barbershop gets shut down for offering security services without, without a security a permit. permit. Yeah, exactly. Don't give them well, any I mean, ideas. Massachusetts. But, yeah, um, you got to get I, out of that place. Saying, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Trust me. I'm, I'm heading north pretty soon. Cool. But, um, but I just I just thought it was interesting that they get this new kind of tactic of saying that cell phones are a weapon. And they specifically uh, said in the article that they can't point to any single instance of it actually being a problem. I just I feel like it's kind of a, a, a BS excuse for them to yep. just. Yeah, that's you know, kind of wipe away it. any accountability and just hassle people in general. It's totally what it is. And uh, thank you for the call tonight, Matt or uh, Adam. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, here in New Hampshire, cell phones are allowed in court. They just don't want them to make noise. So you can be on your phone the whole time. That's not a problem. Um, and that's also something that's fairly rare to find in courthouses these days, from what I understand. Oh, yeah. 855 450 freeze the toll-free number. More on the illegal hair braiding or hair teaching. It's Free Talk Live. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist, libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger that's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent what the free state project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is it's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You are welcome to dial in toll-free here and bring up what you'd like at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It is the gift-giving time of year for Valentine's Day, and what better gift than a delicious BuzzBox coffee gift set? Uh, one, three, six, nine, or 12-month shipments are available. You can make your gift the length of your choice over at coffee.freetalklive.com. We've been talking a lot about BuzzBox coffee here on Free Talk Live because it's really great coffee. It's USDA certified organic 
shade grown, top 1% Arabica grade, fairly traded, and helps support the many good causes of Kiva.org because a portion of the profits are being loaned out as micro loans to people around the world. So you can help people out and get some really great coffee for your loved ones uh, this Valentine's Day. Light roast, medium roast, dark roast, espresso, decaf, signature blends, roasters, limited reserve, buzzbox coffee offers it all. And for the K-Cup gifts, be sure to have them include reusable solo fill. Uh, it's, again, Buzzbox Coffee. You go to coffee.freetalklive.com and give them the gift option. What you do is you go and select Give Buzzbox at the top of the page at coffee.freetalklive.com, or you can call them toll-free, 866-336-6104 for Buzzbox Coffee. That's 866 866- 336-6104. It's a great way to give a gift and make a difference one cup at a time uh, for Valentine's Day. That's again, coffee.freetalklive.com. Select Give Buzzbox. Now, Danica, just to kind of recap what you told us at the top of the hour, there's a lady who's been doing African hair braiding. She's uh, been doing hair braiding since the late 70s. And it, was it African hair braiding or just, just hair braiding? Um, it's a It's a specifically African hair braiding. Right. So she's been doing kind of a unique style of uh, of hair braiding since the late 70s. In the late 90s, she was arrested for doing this without a license. Yes. A decade later, after a lot of, I'm sure, a lot of effort working within the system, she finally had the victory, and she created a new license for people who are braiding hair. Yay! However, and this is this is the best one of the best parts about it is that it doesn't apply to teaching braiding so she can braid but she can't pass on her knowledge to someone else who wishes to also have healing through hair because you have to go to some government approved school some kind of uh, beauty school or something like that in order to garner the hours of training supposedly necessary in order to have the hair braiding license in the first place so even though this lady is a preeminent expert in doing African hair braiding, she cannot pass along her information legally because to she doesn't else. have the teaching certificate. Well, no. Uh, well, okay. So she was grandfathered into this new certificate thing because of just how long that she's been doing it. Meaning she has the certificate to braid the hair, but not right. to teach. She cannot. She is fighting to try and teach it as well. Now, in the in the 1950s, less than five percent of Americans need a license to work from the government, and it was usually only for those like doctors and lawyers that would need those kinds of certifications. Uh, but now, recent estimates that number as high as 30 percent of occupations need some sort wow. of um, license from. I'm surprised it's that low. Yeah, I am too. I I would have thought it was much higher. I've heard New Hampshire is one of the lowest states on uh, licensed requirements, or as far as like licensed uh, I've heard industries. That too. Yeah. So in her so occupational licensing is typically defended as a way to protect consumers and ensure quality practitioners. And I have mentioned, you know what, you probably wouldn't want to go get a tattoo from someone that doesn't have some sort of certification because you don't know what kind of diseases they could potentially put in your body. Cosmetology licenses shows they know how to work with certain chemicals. Those, you know, are kind of understandable. But I, I still don't think that those should be government licenses. I, I totally agree. I'm just saying I can understand some need, some sort, some sort of non-government certification saying, "Hey, I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to destroy your body." But in ISIS's case, Texas won her braiding school, the Institute for Ancestor Braiding, to have a minimum of 2,000 square feet of floor space, <laughs> more than twice the size of her current facility. Install at least 10 barber chairs, even though braiders don't cut hair. They just weave it and braid it. And have at least five sinks, despite the fact the state makes it illegal for hair braiders to provide services that require a sink. So this is... You have to have a sink, but you can't use the sink. This is the insanity uh, just on display of these government rules. Somebody at some point... Uh, connected to the state in Texas, some legislator, they lobbied for these rules. They said, hey, we need to have a government license for hair braiding, or not hair braiding, but uh, beauty schools. There needs to be these qualifications. If you don't have these things, you are not a beauty school in the state of Texas. And then somebody plucked out of thin air 
Oh, five of these sinks and these kind of hair, you know, uh, stations. Yeah, because five sinks totally makes a difference. It needs to be at least 2,000 square feet. Otherwise, you're not a real school. You're obviously not, you can't learn in 1,000 square feet. And so, you know, somebody plucked these numbers out. And what they're really doing here is they're restricting the marketplace. They're making it so small businesses cannot compete with these established beauty schools who've been around for a long time, that there can't be a home-based beauty school in Texas and in many other places. Now, the regulations are so strict that Texas couldn't even name a single school that taught only the natural hair rating curriculum and complied with the state's barber regulations. Now, I wonder what sort of you know repercussions the government in Texas would have against ISIS if she made YouTube videos, put them on a website, and then charged people to then access the videos. Like, put them behind a paywall. Well, but she wouldn't be able to claim she's a licensed school. She could do it probably legally, but she wouldn't likely be able to claim she's a right, beauty Right, but school. then she would still be right. teaching. And they're saying she can't teach. No, she could teach. It's just it won't be recognized. Right. She, right there's no, my understanding, her. they're telling her she can't teach. She can't teach behind her school, but I mean, she could private. She can privately teach, but she wants to be able to have an institute where all can come and learn from her. She can tutor somebody, but she can't. the The hours that she spends tutoring would not count towards that person's thirty five hours that they need to get in order to get the Texas license. So ultimately, she has really kind of failed at what she wanted to do, which was to make it so that people who wanted to do African hair braiding could do it and not be arrested. Uh, she thought she had gotten somewhere by creating this license, and now, unfortunately, in order to give out these licenses, these people have to go to government-approved schools, which, of course, her school or her shop does not does not qualify because somebody else at some point down along the line created this. It's very similar to what happened in New Hampshire, where the person who actually wrote the regulations about uh, the state representative who wrote the regulations about uh, beauty schools here owned a beauty school. And so who should be surprised that this individual created the rules preventing other people from getting into the business of being a beauty Trying school. Trying to force them out. Right. She's protecting herself. That's And that's the same thing that's happening in Texas. Somebody else in the 70s or 60s or whatever came up with these rules knowing that poor people would not be able to compete with them. So get this. In 24 states, hair, braider, hair braiders, by the way, not cosmetologists, hair braiders, need more training than emergency medical technicians. <laughs> Completing the necessary coursework in one of those 24 states wow. can cost upwards of $20,000 and require up to 21 hours of training. By comparison, EMTs need, on average, about 140 hours for their licenses. Wait, what was the total number of hours for hair braiding? It requires up to 21 hours of training. Up to training. 21 hours. That's not as much as 100-something, uh, right? Well, it can cost upwards of 20000 the money you're saying the money, is, yes. is more, and the not hours, the number 2, of hours. I have a friend who's 2,100 hours or 21 hours? 2,100 hours. Okay, that's a big difference. More coming up here, 855, 450 free. It's Free Talk Live. We love that you're passionate about GCN. And whether you're a listener, a business owner, or a radio industry professional, we've redesigned the new GCN newsletter to keep you in the know. Get updates on your favorite GCN shows and hosts. Go to GCNlive.com and click on the banner in the upper left corner just for signing up. You're automatically entered for monthly giveaways. Start receiving your newsletter today. The future of talk radio. GCN. Are you hungry for delicious, nutritious, rich, and satisfying home-cooked meals? Discover the Vita Clay 4-in-1 Smart Organic Cooker. Unglazed Zisha Clay, an ancient secret that makes this fast multi-cooker so special. Infusing your food with incredible flavors, perfect texture, vitamins, and minerals for your good help. It's a slow cooker, rice cooker, a steamer, plus a yogurt maker. Go to VitaClayChef.com and enter promo code RADIO20 for 20% off at checkout. That's VitaClayChef.com. Do you ever say, I could care less when you really mean the opposite, you mean to say, I couldn't care less. It's a common mistake. You are judged by how you speak, especially if you're looking for work with so many more applicants than openings now. But even if you're not, avoiding common misstatements will help you make the most of the dozens of conversations and transactions that crowd your daily routine. So whatever you say, don't say whatever as a single word sentence. 
it's the most annoying expression in the American English language, according to a recent poll. And avoid cliches like the plague. Just kidding. But seriously, at the end of the day, you'll want to avoid this scenario sounding like everyone else. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Tollhouse Morsels, helping you create special moments and memories your family will cherish forever. Visit us at tollhouse.com. You may bake for birthdays and holidays, but why stop there? Sweeten up the rest of the year by designating monthly dessert days. Treat your family to one of their favorites or surprise them with something new. Either way, you'll create a tradition everyone will love. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. For the listeners, each talk show has like a, you're in the Joe Blow Army. Or, you know, the Ditto Heads. Do the lefties have it too? The I, I couldn't tell you. Ed Heads, isn't Yep, Ed Heads. Yeah, yeah Ed Heads. So they all have them. I, I really want like to hear rename you. our uh, listeners uh, Mindless Free Talk Live Zombies. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? The free call Talk in, Live Automatons. Call in if you're a Mindless Free Talk Live Zombie. What does it mean to you to be left? What does it mean to you Progressive. to be right? What does it mean to you to be conservative? What does it mean to you to be liberal? I think they're very vague concepts that pit people against one another. Many people who otherwise, in the absence of being able to plaster themselves with that label, might find out they've got an awful lot in common. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Of course, you can bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features waiting for you. Once again, that's freetalklive.com with you here tonight. You've got me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. We're talking about illegal hair teachings. First, it was illegal hair braiding, which is now kind of legal in Texas, where you can get a government permission slip in order to not be arrested for braiding someone else's hair for money. Presumably, you can still braid not for money uh, legally, but if money changes hands, usually the government guys want to get in there and get a cut of that. Uh, so they've done that, and this lady basically has spent her professional career lobbying for changes to the law to allow for people to commit hair braiding without getting arrested uh, in Texas. I mean, this all just sounds, I, I mean, I hope this sounds ridiculous and absurd to people listening to the show maybe for the first time tonight, because it absolutely should be. This is absolutely outrageous, the idea that you need to have some kind of permission slip to engage in an act that is based on consent. Now, Danica, you were saying you could understand that in certain professions like cosmetologist, for instance, which is working with chemicals. Tattooing, which and involves tattooing. needles. Yeah. You, know, I don't necessarily, you know, I don't necessarily think it should be the government that has to give you these licenses, but I do think there should be some sort of certification saying, you know, hey, I know what I'm doing. I have attended so many hours of a piercing workshop. I have attended so many. These are all the awards I've gotten. I know what I'm doing. You know, if you give me your money, you're going to make a solid investment. And, you know, to those kinds of professions, I agree. You know, there may be need something like that for reassurance. But this woman, she's braiding hair. She's not even like using any sort of of chemicals to do that. But but you you know while you're saying that you could understand you would also agree that it should be a an independent certification independent, not a government well, mandated thing. Like if I want to go absolutely. and hire a shade tree uh, nail painter, I should be able to do that, right? Like if I want to take the risk as a customer 
and go somewhere where there's no certificate, if I want to go to some kind of shade tree tattoo parlor where I get the tattoo for half the price, but they have no certificate of uh, authenticity or you know training or anything like that, they just it's just some guy with a needle. Uh, I should be able to take that risk, shouldn't I? I, I totally agree. You should I've be able to seen make that. people hire a tattoo guy for a six pack of beer. Yeah, well, it should be totally legal. Bar, and then, barter system you know, is nice. You get what you pay, pay for. for. Sure. Sure. Uh, but that's what, sh- you know, that should be legal. It should be buyer beware, where the buyer's responsibility is to is to vet the person that they're doing business with. Yeah, if you're getting a tattoo, you should be concerned about cleanliness and you should be concerned about, you know, how's the shop kept and, you know, are they using fresh needles and, you know, basic stuff like that. Um, and that that's where certifications can come in. And I think that certifications would do a better job of making sure that people are clean and doing things right of course. than uh, than government. If you look at restaurants, for, in- for instance, a lot of times the level of uh, cleanliness and certification levels that they have are actually higher than whatever the health code requires. So the government health code oh, yeah, is... yeah, like a- Michelin Awards or any of those kinds of awards that go for the top restaurants. Michelin? I've never heard of that yeah, one. What yeah, is yeah, that? Uh, it's a, it's a, I, th- I believe it's called a Michelin Award. It's... Um, I don't know. Sounds too much like a about. tire company. Well, it, that's what I thought too when I heard it. When I heard it too, and Michelin is a tire company, but there is one of the most prestigious awards for, for restaurants. For restaurants, for even chefs, huh. is that award, and it's just you know it's higher than any sort of uh, certification that they could possibly have. And by comparison, it takes someone longer to be a cos uh, cosmologist than an EMT. You know, it, it requires up to 2,100 hours of training for hair. A cosmetologist or, be- or a cosmologist? Cosmetologist, sorry. I am like... A I cosmologist apologize. is someone who studies space, I know, the, uh, I am like space, having right? really, really bad <laughs> terms with words. Please forgive me. I don't know what's going on. But anywho, uh, EMTs need about, on average, about 140 hours, whereas someone in the beauty department needs 2,100 hours. Just, you know, think about that. How is that even possible? I mean, I these EMTs just... are working on your body. Right. The EMTs are saving people's lives, and I mean, that's just shocking. <laughs> that's just unbelievable. So the Michelin Guide, it is put out by the Michelin the tire company, uh, company mm-hmm. but they've been putting out this guide for over 100 years. It's the Michelin Red Guide. It is the oldest European hotel and restaurant reference guide. See, that's one word that I am not missing up on. Michelin stars for excellence. To a select few establishments. Tom is in Rochester, Michigan. You're on Free Talk Live. Tom. Hey, guys. I uh, listen quite a bit, and I was a, I'm was a former state legislator here in Michigan. A couple of years ago, I submitted a bill to eliminate licensing for barbers. And you would have thought I, you know, was just the worst person. All the, the main opposition was actually from the colleges that uh, – mm. that, they give the instruction for barbers, and they sent letters to all of their students who were working as barbers, and they, they said, you know, and, and we had people calling saying, look, we are very similar to doctors. We handle razors. We're near people's necks. So, you know, this is very, you know, you need <laughs> you need to license these people. And, I mean, it, it, it's, it's uh, there's a real special, you know, it's a, um, you know, concentrated. Make sure you've taken and, that and, don't and slice their necks thought. open class. I mean. <laughs> Come on. Uh, yeah, there's, yeah, I mean, it, people just have to understand the concentrated benefit and dispersed cost. So, you know, everybody's – there's a cost to this, but there's a real – there's certain people that benefit from it. And, and those people that have the incentive the, the to – those people have right. the incentive to fight tooth and nail to keep the status quo. Whereas- and also to convince the people that they're getting money from to go lobby – well – I had to jump through this hoop. Mm-hmm. Other people right. should have to jump through the hoop too. The students should support the ab- 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 uh, abolition of this licensing because they but can they're quit already school. out money. Like they, they've yeah. already invested money in this. True. Good point. They don't want to feel right. like they're Some losing costs. money. I spent money on this piece yeah. of paper that doesn't exist anymore. So, Tom, I take it your your bill went down in flames. Well, you know, there was a lot of co-sponsors who signed on to it, but then after I filed it, and and then all of a sudden the the colleges, these barber colleges, went ballistic. Yeah, they it didn't uh, didn't get a hearing. Wow, didn't even get a hearing. Right, but you know, we I was on. Uh, we do pretty well in Michigan. We fought. I, I don't know. You're talking about uh, Danica's <laughs> talking about Institute for Justice. Is that where you're getting your stuff? Because they're really good. I worked with them. Yes, yes, it is Institute for Justice. 
You yeah, poor people I, in Michigan. You don't even get to hearing hearings on bills in New Hampshire. Every single bill has to have a hearing. <laughs> Hey, what do you get paid as a state legislator in uh, in Michigan? They get paid uh, seventy two thousand. Uh, what? That was actually a, that was actually a, a, well, it's a full time. It's one of the four states that have a full quote unquote full time legislature. I tried to put in for a. I had a I had legislation also to make it part time and to cut our pay, you know, to, down to like ten grand, which is a lot more wow. than New Hampshire. I understand, but um, at any rate, it's. Yeah, there's uh, seventy two thousand dollars. Do you get a, a per diem as well with seventy two grand? Well, the, there's a stipend of nine hundred dollars a month <laughs> uh, for for cars because people live up in the UP, like eight hours away, yeah. and they have to mm-hmm. get a, they have to get an apartment. But everybody car. gets the nine hundred, right? It's not right. just oh, the yeah, UP it, people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another uh, ten thousand dollars, right? So c- chalk it up to about eighty two grand per year. Yeah, pretty it's sweet. Job, Do you get staff? Frankly. I mean, during the during oh yeah, a couple staff, uh, and during during the summer you're off almost get all. A, Do you get summer. an office? It's, it's a part time. <laughs> Do you get oh, an yeah. office? Yeah, you get an office. Nice. Now yeah, the secretary. office. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. In New Hampshire, you get a locker. And if a, you're lucky. <laughs> wait, if you're lucky, what? The newbies don't get a locker? Uh, I've heard that some of the state reps don't have a locker. They don't have enough of the lockers to go around. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> I love it. Hey, Tom, thanks for sharing your story tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. If you, if you love Liberty, then you, really, you got to get to uh, New Hampshire. This is the place to be. This is where people uh, you know, actually have a chance at, uh, at being more free. What you talk about? I listen to you a lot, and we're doing a lot of what you're talking about here in Michigan as well. But I understand. you got to push. You know what? We're having some well. internet difficulties, and I apologize about that. I can't even hit the. Uh, I can't even put the. I can't even hit the drop button on wow, my phone. Wow, that took you a board. while. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks, Tom, for the call tonight. I I appreciate the efforts of folks out in other states, but you know you're just not going to get that far compared to what's happening here in New Hampshire, where we've actually got a convergence of liberty-minded people coming here and getting active. There's more coming up. You can take control of the airwaves at 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. Majid lives in Nordavin, Armenia, with his wife, kids, and grandkids, all in the same house. They have cows, but to compete against the big ranchers, Majid needed to get a loan for more cattle. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan for the cows. He bought them, and now he's very happy with the expansion of his farm. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound to try out the subscription. Cancel it any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Bitch is smoking crack. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices a 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, Government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. 
Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. Rats is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. Rats was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. Rats is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download Rats free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free to bring up whatever you'd like. 855 450 free is the number. Even in these remaining moments, we do have enough time for you. If you call right now, you can also join us via Skype. As long as our internet doesn't bomb out on you as it did in the last segment. Uh, so we've got two internet connections here. So even if one goes down, we'll still be online. But it can be a little wonky sometimes. But no normally Skype works really well. So feel free to connect to us there at username lrn.fm. Another great site to visit is freedomsphoenix.com. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go to freedomsphoenix.com. Sign up for their free daily dispatch. That, again, is freedomsphoenix.com. Danica, you've been telling us about a lady named Isis, uh, which has to be a difficult name to... Named after is. the Egyptian uh, goddess, I, I presume. I was just going to say she has absolutely no relation to a very horrible organization. Right. Other way away so i'm saying she's um, likely has a, it's probably a, a little tough to have that name in uh, in this time frame uh, that we're occupying sure. at the moment oh, she yeah. has uh, faced a real arduous challenge trying to legitimize her african hair braiding business that she's been engaged in for decades was arrested for her efforts back in the 1990s uh, then they finally legitimized it by passing some sort of ordinance or a statute in texas that allows for a 35 hour a permit, essentially, where you get 35 hours of training and then you get some sort of permission slip from the government. Which is actually, now that I think about that, that's kind of an insult to her because she has, she started braiding in the late 70s and started um, like teaching it in 1984 to the article. So putting all all of that five years of work before she started doing it as a profession on 35 hours, I mean, it's just, I mean, I mean, it's kind of a slap in the face to her, but I guess that's... Well, the, the real point. slap in the face was when she was told she couldn't teach the hair yeah. braiding legally because she uh, is not certified, or she's she's not, her facility is not certified. She doesn't have 2,000 square feet. She, she doesn't, doesn't have, have barber's chairs. She doesn't have five sinks. Uh, all stupid. Even though she's legally prevented as a hair braider from using the sinks... Right. In order to have a teaching facility, she has to have sinks that can't be used. Yeah, it's just it's so backwards. And, you know, what's crazy about, you know, normal um, beauty licenses is that um, they're taught how to give things like manicures and facials. And most of the time they're not going to be using this in their careers. They're going to be 
either going to be working on hair, they're going to right. be working with dyes, they're going to be working with other things, not necessarily how to give manicures and facials. It, you know, it's just it's it's just so ridiculous that they're required to have all. You know, thousands of hours of training. And That's what college does, though, right? They yeah. saddle you with all these dumb courses that have nothing whatsoever to do with your actual major, uh, with what you went to the school to learn. I remember when I went to community college, it was like high school all over again with maybe two classes that I took that had any relevance whatsoever to my chosen um, minor or whatever. I got an associate's in radio and television broadcasting, and the... Uh, you know, the two years I spent in college, the only classes that I took that had any relevance whatsoever, one was a voice and diction class, and I actually had to unlearn some of the things they taught me. They taught me to overemphasize uh, things in that class, and then when I went to work, uh, the guy in the production room at the radio station I was working at had to pull me aside and was like, look, you can't be doing this. You're uh, saying oil funny. Really? No, no. That 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 was one of the ones during my voice and oh, that's what they said to you. Oil, like you you had to like really emphasize oh, oil, really? <laughs> oil, so that it just sounds really oil. weird. Okay, yeah. yeah, that 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 does sound really weird. They taught me to uh, to hit T's and things like that. So when I did AutoZone reads, I would say AutoZone, and <laughs> uh, that just sounds so weird. Yeah, it sounds terrible. But that's what they taught me in college. Right. And so I had to un unlearn that. And that was the only class that really had anything at all to do with radio. Can, of course, it was a radio slash TV broadcasting. And so there was another class that uh, was like a film class, basically, where I made a student movie in that class. And so those were like the only two classes. There was a history of film. So two or three classes in an entire four semesters of college that had any relevance whatsoever because the rest of it was just all this mandated crap that they just piled in did, there. Did you at least have have a college radio station no see that this that's one of the things college. where right i went to community college as well and but we had, one? we had a college radio wow. station and the last year and a half that i was in college i was on a radio station management scholarship so like i was helping run the student radio station and got a free education while doing it sweet so one that's of my cool. classes was like you know station management Another one of my classes was my air shift, hmm. and so I, I would say about half of my classes were directly related wow, to you. broadcasting, but the other half, it was I had to take a art appreciation class, computer class, uh, computer class, the same math class that I took in eighth grade. <laughs> yeah, uh, I actually had a science class where the book was the exact same book as I took in high school. Oh, the no history way. class. <laughs> The college history class that I took was the same history class I had in like tenth grade. Yep. Same book. Yep. Uh, yeah. So most of what I did in college was high school all over yeah. again. It's like high school with cigarettes, as they say. Well, with the exception of you know getting credit for doing an air shift. And what about you, Danica? What was your educa education? Education. Uh, well, I mean, I was homeschooled for the majority of my. Uh, you know, growing up and really? okay. I, I did go, you know, I did go to college. I did graduate from college and like a uh, big college, like uh, a four year. Yeah. Like, college? yeah. Like a university style college. Ooh, you're fancy. Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, it, it's just, it was interesting because I, you know, I'd be homeschooled and people would ask, Oh, the typical questions like, do you get to do school in your pajamas? And it's like, no, yes. I actually have to, you know, no? get up and get dressed. That's ridiculous. If I were homeschooled, I would stay in my pajamas. You, you th yeah, I, I wish that that, <laughs> that that would be really nice. Uh, and sometimes they were really serious, like, oh, do you not really get to socialize? And, and they'd be like, no, we go on field trips all the time. With other homeschoolers, right? Other homeschoolers. We would, you know, some we had, we had friends that did go to public school. They, you know, there were church events. You know, we had plenty of socialization. So I was homeschooled for my, you know, up until, you know, 12th grade. Um, I took my GED. I took my SAT, took my ACT, um, which, you know, those were just absolutely stupid stupid and i really wish they would just get away with them all together but that's another story for another time so did you ever then, have to ride on a school bus um not to school i have ridden on a school bus before but never to and from school because you were homeschooled so you never had to deal with bus drivers then no uh, there is a recent uh, situation in guilford new hampshire where some students have uncovered that the school buses have video cameras in them and those cameras are recording audio they confront uh, two of the drive, three of the drivers of the school buses, and they get two of them to admit 
that the buses were recording audio without notice, which in New Hampshire is technically wiretapping, and that's a felony. Um, but they then go on a third school bus. I'm jumping in ahead in this video because we're short on time. But this video is just so amusing. I wanted to share it with you where they confront a bus driver over this, and she doesn't know how to react. Hi there. Wait a minute. You can't take pictures on here. Yeah. Well, why not? She, she's on, I'm, she's audio. I'm audio recording it's and video. video. What for? It doesn't just matter. I'm yes, just... it does matter. Why? why? You're taking a video. Do not take a video on my bus or my or picture. Why? why? Other bus drivers love us. You're not doing it. Why? Not on my bus. Is that your rule or um, it's illegal? It's for a student. So? They have what a do you mean? That says that? Okay. So this woman picks up her microphone to her two-way radio at this point and uh, calls for help. You guys can get on, sorry. I have two people here. Are you guys students? Yeah. Students that want to take video and pictures in my, and they're taking a video of me right now. <laughs> we just want to ask you a question. It's video and audio, just by the and way. And audio. And I don't understand why they're on my bus. We doing told you this. why. We, we just want to ask a question. I'm at the middle school right now. They're high school. High school Does kids. Doesn't matter. I mean, yes. No, I'm not going to answer that. I love these students. I love how they're just, you know, not letting her badger them with questions. No, they're fearless. That's like, great. Yeah, I'm just walk on her bus and start asking her questions. And the, the other bus drivers that they talked to were more than happy to give answers, and they didn't have a problem with the camera. But this lady's freaking out, and she's she's very, very silly in her behavior. Even though they have, don't they have cameras on the That's bus? That's the point they made, was that uh, she's saying, you can't record on my bus. Well, wait a minute, lady. You're That's, doing that? You're doing that? You're doing it illegally, constantly. Do not video. They're doing it no matter what. All right, listen, we're going to leave. We're going to leave as soon as you answer the question. So the person on the radio tells the woman to take a picture of them. So she starts to fumble around for her camera. And you'll have to watch the video yourself to see the rest of it and how it turns out. You can go to freekeen.com. It is one of the top stories there called Guilford School Bus Drivers Admit Recording Audio Without Notice. You can check it out when you get a chance. We'll see you online in the meantime between now and tomorrow night at freetalklive.com. Check out Daryl's website, fpp.cc. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain-relieving braces, too, for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. The Corey Moore Show is coming up next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. 
From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, February 13th, 2015. Silver is trading at $17.02 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,228 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $235. Antiwar.com reports, after another 17 hours of marathon talks in Minsk, Belarus, the Ukrainian civil war is once again heading for a ceasefire, with officials on both sides announcing the deal and the fighting scheduled to formally end on Sunday. Both sides are getting significant concessions, including the long-sought withdrawal of heavy weaponry and artillery from the front lines between Ukrainian government territory and rebel-held Donbass. Ukraine is also to get back a pilot who is being held by the Russian government on charges of killing a pair of Russian journalists during the Civil War. The Eastern rebels are being assured of future constitutional reforms, as well as economic and humanitarian consideration for civilians trapped in the frontline combat areas. The reform promises appear similar to the ones from the September 2014 ceasefire, which held for months but began to fray when the reforms did not happen. That ceasefire finally collapsed last month with skirmishes around the Donetsk airport giving way to a full military offense on rebel territory. The rebels turned the table pretty quickly and regained some territory lost before September, meaning Donbass now includes some territory not held since last summer. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. UPI reports a federal judge ordered a Mobile County, Alabama judge to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples on Thursday. U.S. District Court Judge Callie Grenade said Mobile County Probate Judge Don Davis must issue the licenses after he shuttered the county's marriage license office earlier this week. On Monday, the state started handing out marriage licenses to same-sex couples for the first time after Grenade struck down Alabama's ban as unconstitutional. She said the Alabama Marriage Protection Act was unconstitutional Constitutional because it violated the Equal Protection and Due Process Clauses of the 14th Amendment. Roy Moore, the Chief Justice of the Alabama Supreme Court, told probate judges not to issue the licenses, and some, like Davis, followed his order. Grenade ruled Tuesday, if plaintiffs take all steps that are required in the normal course of business as a prerequisite to issuing a marriage license to opposite-sex couples, Judge Davis may not deny them a license on the grounds that plaintiffs constitute same-sex couples or because it is prohibited by the Sanctity of Marriage Amendment and the Alabama Marriage Protection Act or by any other Alabama law or order pertaining to same-sex marriage. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. Reuters reports two remaining Al Jazeera journalists jailed in Egypt on charges of aiding a terrorist organization were freed on bail Thursday.